Welcome to the San Jose Hockey Now podcast. I'm Shang Peng, Editor-in-Chief of San Jose Hockey Now. You can also find my work at NBC Sharks and on Twitter at Shang underscore Peng. And I'm Keegan McNally. You can find my Twitter at half underscore hockey at my website, half-wallhockey.com or at San Jose Hockey Now. It's preseason training camp update show. That's the yes. name of it. Well, we have a very exciting show today. We're going to talk about a couple of training camp battles, but... Most importantly, we're going to talk about our top 10 Sharks prospects. We're going to reveal our tar- top 10 Sharks prospects list. Mm-hmm. And when I get less lazy, I'm going to actually write the article with like a full top 20 <laughs> Sharks prospect. I've just I've outlined it a bunch. I just haven't been able to to see it through yet. I thought you had like out. a top 30, actually. I got a 20 plus a ton of honorable mentions. So. <laughs> Sharks have been piling up prospects, and it makes the top 10 lists every year that we do... Well, we we probably do them twice a year, honestly, and uh, they're just a little bit better every year. Yeah. So, but uh, usually I like to do it uh, before the season at the trade deadline, and I anticipate that a couple of these guys might graduate by then. So it's going to be a little bit different looking by the deadline. Yeah, and also this is coming on the heels of uh, services like um, EP putting out the Sharks as the number one prospect pool, pool in the NHL. So um, I actually don't remember where the Athletic landed the Sharks. But somewhere in the top five, I think. Okay, only the top um, five. <laughs> I think so, because they do. They they like Corey does like a U twenty three ranking as opposed okay. to like a just prospect pool. I think sure. Wheeler does a pool ranking, but he does his in like January. Mm-hmm. So I, I don't know where they landed for the Sharks, but okay. I think I think Corey had us in the top five, probably of U twenty three. Yeah, yeah, because U twenty three that means Bedard's still in it, and a lot exactly. of guys are still in it, right? Sure. Yeah, and so the Sharks are not. Like, for pool-wise, guys that are not in the NHL yet, honestly, the Sharks might have the best prospect pool in the NHL. Ever. Um, Ever. No, not ever. (laughs) (laughs) But we're going to talk all about it, and also we're going to have some informed opinions on these players, because a lot of them are competing for jobs in training camp this week, uh, next week. So why don't we start with, um, we're going to talk about just some impressions from camp and where we think some important training camp battles might be going on right now. As well as injury updates as well. Right, right, right. Well, uh, let's first start talk with the injury updates. Just really briefly, no. we're going to touch on some of this in our top 10 prospects too. But since the beginning of training camp, Shakir Mukhamadoulin, Yaroslav Askarov, and Mark mm-hmm. Edward Vlasic, they have been hurt. They have day-to-day injuries, but it's been week, it's been it's been a week since, <laughs> since they were labeled day-to-day. From what I understand there are kind of two steps for them to really get back into game action. Number one, they have to start skating. And then after they start skating for a little bit, then they will rejoin practice. And none of these guys have done either of these things. And so is that a concern? Yes, it is a concern, especially for opening night. And I would say especially for Askarov, because as a goalie, you think you want to see him at least in one, two preseason games before you even think about having him start the season with the Sharks. And the Sharks' last preseason game is October 5th. And we are recording this on Friday, September 27th. So that's yeah. going to be that's going to be a little... I, I'm going to say that Ascroft at this point probably going to start the season at the Barracuda. We'll talk more about that a little later. I don't want to get too much into the details. But yeah. I will mention, though, that my understanding still, I know that it seems sort of seems sort of questionable because these guys still continue continue being out and being hurt but last week i checked in i was told mukmudulin and askarov were both short-term injuries don't be too worried and i checked in again yesterday with a source outside of the sharks so you know it's not the sharks company line or whatever I, i'm getting fed yeah. and same thing that believes that askarov will be on the ice soon but Nonetheless, though, until we see them on the ice, there's going to be a bit of concern. And obviously, it this causes a lot of depth problems for the Sharks, especially on defense, because you kind of figured Luke mm-hmm. Madulin and Vlasic would be in a picture for that. But anyway, we'll talk about that with camp battles in a little bit. Yeah, the uh, the interesting thing, too, is this Vanacek and his limited action looked pretty good. So it's not like they're like... Um, Goalie, they're fine. Yeah, between yeah. Lockwood and Vanacek. So I really, I think what you're saying makes a lot of sense where Askarov probably has to, didn't get enough time and enough reps to start up in the NHL, especially over a guy who's playing well in a vet like Vanacek. So I feel like they're, you're right. He's probably going to have to start the Barracuda at this point. 
depending on his injury. But right, right, right. Um, okay, and then we had a, a small Couture update, which is is not good news. Um, <laughs> Same, yeah, yeah, not too much of a change there, right? Um, for for Couture, so do not expect Couture for opening night, uh, which kind of um, makes our like roster projections a little more interesting um, because it's it's looking like possibly that we could have Macklin Celebrini as our number one center starting the year. What do you think? I think that Granlin, actually, we probably should save that for for sure. the, the top 10 uh, list, but well, I we're think... going to talk about who's going to be on his wing here as uh, one of our camp. Sure. Battles, sure. Right? Sure. Okay. So actually let's, let's, let's save, let's save the <laughs> Celebrini one C by October 10th uh, for, for when we get to Mac. How about that? Oh, okay. All yeah. Right. And then let's let's talk about um, the the camp battle that is emerging yeah. on his wing. So sure. so far throughout training camp, Celebrini and Tofoli, as we've kind of guessed, have been stapled together. Mm-hmm. But they've had uh, they started they started with Clem Costin uh, at that wing, and then the last couple of practices they've put Carl Grundstrom next to there. So sure. I think that's a very interesting kind of contrast of styles. I will say that between the two. That while Costin is a very actually Costin's game yesterday against the Ducks, the Thursday game against the Ducks is actually I think very emblematic of of Clean Costin. He wasn't very good in the first period or two, and Ryan Rossi pointed out in the post game. Sure. But obviously though, Costin was dominant in the third period and in overtime. Third period couldn't get couldn't be moved in front of the net on his tying goal right that's what Jamal Mayer said and that's exactly what Clem Costin can bring to you that he is uh, he can be unmovable in front of the net and he has soft hands too and then in overtime right that move that he pulled I think it was on Luno in overtime mm-hmm. and that totally set up the goal Luca Cagnoni's game winning goal there yep. and so those are the things that Clem can do for you when he's at his best but what he wasn't doing early in the game, which kind of got, I think he got kicked off the first power play or something. If I no, that was musty, but nonetheless though, sure, um, yeah. but Costin was not, was not great. He was making careless with the puck, you know, doing those rookie kind of passes in terms of like, you're going to the neutral zone on the wing and then you try to hit the, the center on the rush in the neutral zone, but it's a turnover there, right? The kind of yeah. stuff that that's great to do. If you're 18, you're 19, you're making those kind of mistakes. No problem. Costin's 25. He shouldn't be doing that. So anyway, so there is going to be that consistency issue. Carl Grundstrom is the contrast in terms of just being, I think, going to be more reliable, going to be a guy that probably the coaches have more trust for, trust in, but he doesn't have cost in ceiling. Mm-hmm. I will say with Grundstrom, one thing that was interesting, I watched him in practice today, and he and, Tufo- and, he and Celebrini were in drills uh, – Grunstrom was putting in everything that 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 Celebrini was feeding him. Now I'm not saying that's going to translate to to sure. to the NHL, but maybe though Warsawski has maintained with Grunstrom all the way back to the draft. Actually, if you remember, we asked we asked Warsawski about Grunstrom. I think at the draft because the mm-hmm. Sharks they just traded for Grunstrom. Even back then, he had maintained that he thought that Grunstrom had more offense. Yeah, yeah. and so that's been a consistent theme. So I think that. Brunstrom will get that chance. And Orsasi was citing watching him play in the AHO over the years, obviously watching him with the Kings for the last two years. So I think Brunstrom is going to get some opportunity to kind of fill in in a scoring role. I, yeah, I, I came into training camp thinking that um, Grunstrom and, you know, the, the slurry of bottom six wingers that we have were all kind of the same. Um, like, they were going to move around the, the lineup the same, or they were going to be kind of equivalent players. But I, I thought he's like Grundstrom has stood out a little bit more than the the bottom six has, like your Cunnins and your your Goodrose and your Delandrias. Maybe not Wenberg, because Wenberg's actually been very impressive. Yeah, but, Wenberg is a middle six player. He doesn't yeah. need. Yeah. So I I think he stood out enough to be an interesting option on that that top line. He, he clearly isn't that level of skill of Tavoli and Celebrini, but just as a net front, good four checker. Um. I think he he's got enough there that that kind of rounds that complimentary line out. player, right? Yeah, yeah, rounds that line out for sure. So I yeah. would be interested. And in terms of the language that Warsawski has used around these players, he mm-hmm. has not said he has not been as consistent in that language about a Gaudreau, uh, a Cunnin, um, mm-hmm. the Landry. I don't don't really hear him talking about. Oh, I think this guy's got got more off. I think Warsawski really does does think this of Grunstrom. So Grunstrom, sure. I think, is going to get a look if not. 
to open the season. Costin can get himself back on that line, I'm sure. But at some point, though, I think that Grunstrom will probably get a look on a scoring line to see what he can do. Yeah, I do wonder if Costin is this year's Zadina where he has a lot of skills and he can show flashes of being really good and then the, the consistency just isn't there. You know, like they're different players, obviously, but right. I think just the way that their their game is inconsistent with flashes of skill that can make you a little bit upset. <laughs> right, 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 right. I think that that has... Uh, Unfortunately, that, that there's a reason why Costa ended up on the Sharks at 20, sure. first, former first round pick, 25. Obviously, a bundle of tools there, but sure. I think that he also hasn't lived up to sort of has left teams wanting more for sure. Yeah, and I guess your other options, if we're thinking, you know, who's going to be on that wing is you guys got like guys like Eklund, uh, Granlund, I guess, if they wanted to move him up. Um, right, right. And then Zetterland, I guess, on the on his off wing. Um, not all, not excellent options there. You know, I think Smith I, or fun. Smith, maybe. Yeah, Smith <laughs> Celebrini line. Or uh, we're going to talk about him a little later, but or Gushin. So. Or Daniel Gushin on that yeah. line. <laughs> I I think they end up going with somebody like, um, I'm going to say Grundstrom, but we'll you see. You mean Grundstrom? Yeah. I think that's, so. That's a, good, that's a good bet, I think. That's the safe bet. That's, That's the coach's bet. bet you know? That's a safe bet. <laughs> That's what coaches say. They just want somebody they can trust. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they want somebody reliable and somebody that's... And, and honestly, like a lot of the heavy lifting needs to be done on that line. Like Celebrini does a lot. And he has, you know, got an endless motor, but he's he's young. He's new to the NHL and how it works. So a lot of the heavy lifting needs to be done by a vet or, or somebody that's really good at, at doing that. So somebody like Grunstrom makes a lot of sense. And um, obviously, Tavoli is going to be his. It, they've paired him up since the beginning, and I feel like they're never going to get separated. <laughs> Honestly, it feels like they're just like, I don't know. I wonder if there's a clause in Tavoli's contract. If you ever separate me from Celebrini, Celebrini I, I can request a trade <laughs> at that point. I don't hate it. I mean, he starts him off with exactly what he needs on that line, I think. But we'll see. Um, Let's talk some other battles. We are going to, again, well, later on. Let's, well, let's, uh, we're going to tease. So yes. we are going to talk about some other battles, but these are all battles that we can talk about with the prospects that we're going to get to in, in our top 10 prospects list. So we're going to yeah. talk about who is going to be on defense, especially kind of accounting for Mukma Dula and Vlasic, maybe not being ready for opening night at this rate. Like yeah. I mentioned, there's a two-stage process to get them ready for a game, and they're not at either stage yet. Doesn't mean that they're going to be out for a long time, but I think it puts opening night in question for them. And then we alluded to space for prospects at forward. Obviously, we're penciling penciling in Celebrini and Smith, but beyond that, and we'll talk about that in our drum roll top 10 list. But before we get to that, I just remembered. So mm -hmm. these guys... I ran into them. I've, I've seen them in the last couple of practices. Jesse and Carl, really awesome Sharks fans. They asked for a shout out on the on the podcast. Heck they specifically yeah. asked, when is the podcast coming out? And I said, I think wow. we're going to record today. And I got to give a Jesse props too. If you see him around, he has the Sharks jersey and there's all these signatures on it. And he just has been accumulating signatures of the same players in some cases. So huh. he has like 20 Sharks players on there, but I think he has like... He has like three William Eklund signatures or like two <laughs> two Askarov signatures on or something like that. So I, I thought that was really that was really that was really hilarious that uh, he unique. has his multiples. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, thanks I've... for saying hi, Jesse. I wonder if they know, you know, like wonder if William's like, Oh yeah, I remember signing this jersey. They My they do though, here. actually. I yeah. think I think Carl was mentioning that Askarov was like, wait. Didn't I meet you before? Because mm -hmm. I think that they have been going to the Sharks Around the Bay events. Mm -hmm. And okay. then they ran into maybe Askarov after practice or something like that. And, yeah. after, and so Askarov was like, wait, didn't I sign this already? Askarov <laughs> must be thinking there's only like six Sharks fans. He's yeah, like, players, yeah, exactly, just the yeah. same yeah. guy. The players can see their signature. like, wait, I, that's my signature there. So. He's like, this is the same guy. I've signed his jersey four times. And <laughs> Askarov's only been here for like a couple weeks. He's like, there's like six Sharks fans. <laughs> no, that's awesome. Um, yeah, we've been a little delayed in our uh, recording. I think both because Shang has been super busy and I've been super busy. And it's just kind of every day there's some little tidbit of news. And we've 
come to today being the day we're going to record, but it's definitely been a little delayed for sure. Yeah. Well, we, we also too, like we recorded on Mon last Monday. So it feels like a really long time, but yeah, technically it is once a week though. <laughs> during the summer, we were a little kind of off about that, but, yeah. uh, but yeah, we'll, 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 like I mentioned, we'll start getting more regular um, yeah. as the Who's season counting? goes along and, People are counting, I guess. People yeah. are counting. That's Which like we appreciate. People. So thank you. A yeah, couple thank people you have for... asked, where's yes, the podcast? A couple so. people have asked. So, so we, we appreciate that. Yeah. And I do feel like it, it a little bit of a, a, a longing when we don't, we don't record. I'm like, oh, that's kind of, I want to get the opinions out there. There's so many <laughs> things. It's been a fun week. I've just been watching Sharks games again. It's been awesome <laughs> from a fan perspective. Um. Okay, let's start with our top 10, because this is going to take a while. Because yes. each of us have to voice our opinions about these guys and argue and, you know, scream and yell. Yep. Uh, let's start with our honorable mentions first. Um, your first honorable mention, I also have as an honorable mention, so that's a yes. good start. And uh, Thomas Bordalo. Right, and it's a little mixed up, too, the honorable mentions list. I'm looking at it. Um, it's not by... It's not by... Thomas Bordalo is not our 20th... <laughs> No, so we're yeah. gonna talk about 10 prospects. He's not our 20th best sharks prospect. He just sure. happened to be on top of the list. Yeah, Actually, because sure. he was close. He was close to my top 10. I'm sure he was close to your top 10 yep. too. But obviously, Thomas Borlo. Actually, that's big news that we didn't talk about at the beginning that he is out week to week. So yep. unfortunately for Thomas, another bad break for him in terms of he mentioned that he had been kind of playing a little bit hurt for the last couple of years. Nothing too bad. He obviously can play through it, but that he hadn't been able to train in the summer fully, all that stuff. And he just had a full summer of training and he got hurt the third day of, of, of camp or something in a scrimmage. I'm not really sure when he got hurt, maybe at a practice or something like that, but he had been looking uh, from reports from what Ryan Rosasi had said, that a little bit quicker, a little bit, a little bit bigger, a little stronger, all the things that he needs to do. But unfortunately, we won't really know sure. what that means for a little bit of a while because he has a week to week injury. And Warsawski said that, and this is pointed because with the other guys we mentioned, Mukumadul and whatnot, has been insistent that that's day to day, whatever that means, right? But if he's saying week to week, then that means it's a more serious injury for sure. And so I think that Thomas Borla being ready for opening night, be it the Sharks or Barracuda, has to be in question. And obviously, too, that if he is coming back around that time, let's say, at best, and let's say mid-October, that yeah. he's not a guy that they're going to put immediately into the Sharks lineup. He's a guy that needs to. He's not... He's not, he's not Mikhail Granlin. Oh, we got Granlin off, off of IR. We got to put him back in the lineup. He's not, he hasn't established those kind of credentials. So we really have to see. Uh, in terms of just his prospect status, I would say that talking with people a little bit, uh, there isn't. Ooh, mm -hmm. I, I would say that there is still a lot of question marks about his game. I know that he did show some progress last year at the end of the season, but I don't know if that's enough to convince people people who, who watched him last year that, that I talked to. Yeah. Uh, one one scout mentioned to me, I may have mentioned this a couple episodes ago or something, that he had thought that Bortolo was not waiver exempt, that the Sharks would have to expose him to waivers. He's he's wrong about that. The, uh, Bortolo is waiver exempt. But he was saying that he was 50-50 in terms of whether or not Bortolo would get picked up. And so I think that, that kind of tells you that the league is... You may disagree with that. You may think that Bortolo is a for sure waivers pickup. But I think one thing we've learned about waivers over the years is that I think that 90% of the time when you think your guy's going to get picked up, he doesn't get picked up. We think we've seen that over and over again, right? Sure. So I would say that there's at least a healthy debate around the league in terms of whether or not Bortolo has enough to be an everyday angel player. Mm -hmm. It's a... Yeah, he's kind of like holding steady in terms of the rankings for me for a lot a while now. He's been around this like 10, 11, 12 spot, I think, for me for a long 10, 11, 12, sure. 13 um, for a while. And he did have a good end of the year last year. But it is it is a very unfortunate timing of the injury because you want him to be in there battling with the bottom sixers to prove that he can play in the bottom six, I think. Um, and he can't be there. So he's got to 
rebuild his stock afterwards, probably on the Barracuda, unless they have other injuries or who knows what happens. Right, but. right. And I think with Borlo, there is a question sometimes about sort of his his mentality, his approach to to being demoted, things like that. I think he was better with it last year. But yeah. That definitely was a question mark two years ago when that yeah. happened to him. And so we'll see how he kind of kind of deals with the, uh, the, uh, the adversity that he's dealing with. I will say with with Thomas that I've I've always been maybe a, I've never I've never been on the hype train, right? If you remember that from three the years board ago, board of the hype so train. I, yeah, yeah, that 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 I was never on board on that. But uh, as the hype sort of fallen for him, that that I've I've liked him more. Mm. So he's I've had him I think in like the last time we did this I had him eight and I actually liked what he did uh at the end of the season that I was sure. thinking of moving him up a little bit and I talked to some people and they weren't quite as impressed enough that yeah. that would you yeah. know that that would move him up and so that sort of made me a little guarded but I like a lot of of, of what he does I think a lot of the skills are there I just wish that we could see, you know, things that he needed to work on, getting a little stronger, getting a little quicker. Well, we just don't really know because we only saw it so far in scrimmages. I don't think he even got into a preseason game so far. So, well, I guess mm-hmm. we'll just have to wait and see. But I said, I think it's interesting, though, that the league-wide opinion, I think, is a little bit mixed on it. Mixed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that might All be right. at best, too, to be honest. So. Yeah. I mean, he he um, he filled in as well on like the power play. He had some utility. I thought last he was year. good on the power play last year, and so. he also also won faceoffs on the power play. Yeah, which is which, something he's good at. Yeah, which was something they were able to use him there. And so, I thought on the power play he was actually good at connecting plays and keeping play alive and being being a good piece there. And the Sharks power play, not just because of him, but the second half of the season, the Sharks power play was very very productive. They, they were, I think, like seventh in the league or something like that mm-hmm. after like january 31st and so that's in part because of thomas bordolo but anyway all that said in his favor it, it, i think that the like i mentioned league opinion of him i think is maybe not as high as sharks fans would like to hear at least uh leo salen willenius is on both of our honorable mention lists yes. as well um I was always I'm very excited that the Sharks drafted this player. I think I remember mentioning him on the um, pre-draft podcast about a guy that I found interesting for the Sharks to draft in the second round, and they did it. And then it, since since then, I um, yeah, he he just is, he looks very steady. He he um, he has a lot of tools of a NHL defender, except for the size. He's not very big, um, but he is a good skater. He's a good. Uh, rush defender I feel like and I he I don't think he's ever going to wow you with like what he does but I think down the line a few years from now he could be a very solid pickup defensively yeah I I don't have a strong opinion of him I haven't seen him too much but I think Corey Promen was very high on him in a recent thing that that Corey put out right but we'll we'll have to see on on, for me this is a this is a we'll see guy Back in Sweden, I'll watch some games of him this year and see how he's how he's doing. Uh, Ethan Cardwell, all right. The <laughs> the honor, most honorable mention of all honorable mentions. I feel like it's going to be just we're going to honorable mention Ethan Cardwell until like he's a fourth line NHL. Yeah, player. it's been an honorable, honorable mention for a few years now. Yeah, I until know. he breaks into the top ten. I know. <laughs> he keeps on rising. Like he just everybody, even like the broadcast guys. When I listen to the to them watch. Cardwell in preseason games, like everybody always mentions it. Just like, you know what? That kid's got it. And it's not like it meaning that he's skilled and he's going to, you know, wow everything. He just understands the game of hockey super well and understands his role well and how he can affect play with his small size and stature, but endless amounts of energy and some decent playmaking. And yeah, I just, one day he's going to make the NHL and it's going to be, it makes sense. I think it'll be this year. Probably. But it's nice to see him extend. We talked about him a lot in rookie face-off and how good he was at rookie face-off. And he should be, of course, being yeah, of course. an older player that was so successful in the AHL last year. But it's good that that continued, though. He didn't slack off after a great AHL season or a good, good AHL rookie season be like, oh, this tournament's too low, too, too much below me. No, he actually was better. He mm-hmm. actually showed that his game got better over the summer. 
and yep. that has extended itself into training camp. And like I mentioned, his game really does translate. Yep. His game, again, the kind of a cliche, but he can play, can play up and down the lineup. He plays a direct straight line game. I would just say that I just wish he was bigger. And yeah, if he were bigger, then he would be a, a surefire, clear, and he would be in the top 10, honestly. Mm-hmm. Now, he does, he is fast and he is strong too. And so far in preseason, he looks like he might be strong enough. Did a really nice job separating in talking about yesterday's game and his preseason performance on uh, Tristan Robbins' goal. A lot of that was Ethan Cardwell yeah. separating, I think, Pavel Regenda. Regenda's a big guy, sure. and Regenda's an NHL player, too. So separating uh, NHL, legit NHL forward and legit mm-hmm. NHL size and Regenda from the puck to get it to Gushin. And then he, um, Gushin found Robbins there. Yeah, and then the Gushin almost goal where he hit it off the post, that was Cardwell's set-up pass. Uh, right, the nice across pass the in ice. a rush, right? Yep. Yeah, so, yeah, he's got a lot of the tools. And, and even back to juniors, like, just... His puck retrieval is tops, and he just keeps on. I we saw Regenda, right? Yeah, and that's an NHL. Well, not an NHL player. He's like a Close. cleaner, right? Yeah. So that's yeah. He's gonna probably have to go down to the Barracuda, but we'll talk about it because we're gonna talk about that last winger spot, I think. Right. But um, it's possible that he gets some NHL games this year, and I can't wait. I think he'll he'll show out and do really well in his role. Right. And I, I did talk to one scout who is a very big fan of Cardwell's. This is what he said, that he thought that Cardwell is kind of an X-factor winger, just the kind of guy, uh, going to be a bottom six guy, but a guy that's going to be good there, a, bit, a little bit of a difference maker down there, which is, I think, what Cardwell, his ceiling is kind of to be a... If he, if he can score 15 goals a, a, a year and provide a ton of energy and forecheck, that's a really valuable player. And also great attitude, great room guy, which he should be too. That's a winning player. And so he thinks that Carlos is going to fit a third, fourth line role in the NHL pretty well when he reaches his potential. So he's he's a legit prospect. And I think a lot of teams, on a lot of teams, he'd be an easy top 10 guy. But for a system as deep as the, as the Sharks, yep. uh, he is a guy that's outside looking in. The most honorable of honorable mentions. Most Let's honorable. <laughs> like, like Aaron Dell, he's the world's okayest top 10 prospect. So. Love it. <laughs> um, Cam Lund. Anything new to say about Cam Lund? Nothing too new. I think, actually, let's uh, we can pocket in some of these college guys sure. that we have on our um, I think uh, Eric Polkamp belongs in here too, right? Yeah, and Polkamp So these are guys belongs. that, yeah, waiting to see more of during this college season. Lund obviously was a second round pick. And I think that, I think over the last couple of years, we're being honest that has left, left us wanting a little bit just sure. in terms of that he was picked so high. And at times he's, he has uh, he, he looks like he has the ability to take over and he hasn't done that consistently enough at the NCAA level. And you look at the physical package too, you think that maybe he should be better, more productive, all that stuff, right? But hey, good thing is that he's got another year of college, so maybe this is the year for him. Sometimes it takes guys a little bit longer. And also, you too, a, a big man, a guy that has some power forward qualities, at least in terms of size and that yeah. sort of thing. Sometimes it takes a little longer to, to come together, right? And so I think that's okay. So we can be talking about this list at the trade deadline or next preseason, and Lund could be, could be easily in our top 10, maybe even in our top five. Lund reminds me of better Brandon Co, but there's mm-hmm. still some downsides of what Co does that that stick around in Lund's, Lund's game as right. well. So that's that's my current comp for him. Gonna have a a, a big year. Gonna be a big offensive force um, in college. So uh, same with Pole Camp. Hopefully, mm-hmm. gonna have a big year as well after his transfer. He has um, had a meteoric rise for a fifth round pick. Mm-hmm. I don't know meteoric is the right word. He said a rise. Hey, maybe it's team pick. USA, World yeah. Junior Championships, won a gold medal. I, that's pretty good for a fifth-round pick. We'll call it, uh, what's a smaller meteor called? <laughs> Meteorite. Uh... Me- I don't know. He's had a pretty good rise. And I've liked Volcap. He, he, he was good in, um, did he come to rookie face-off, was it? Yeasty, or it? yeasty uh, bre- uh, souffle, I don't know. <laughs> What, what, uh, so we saw him recently. I don't remember if it was rookie face. Oh, I have a good one. How about a, a geyser like, uh, rise? That's pretty good, right? That's not like geyser? too, that's not too, uh, too much, <laughs> but it's still impressive, though. Geyser's still impressive, so 
Also, I think it's funny you call it meteoric rise when meteors fall, right? Like, don't they That's come true. into Earth? Why do they call it a meteoric rise if, like, they're falling? Is it just because it's fast? You know what? Somebody needs to, to <laughs> figure this shit out, man. We're not going to figure it out, clearly. But meteoric sounds like it's a fall, you know? They come and hit the Earth. Anyway, uh, pole camp. I like that guy, too. Good shot. <laughs> Lots of energy. Plays physical. Is small, but good. That's a lot of sharks prospects, honestly. Is small but good. Is small but good. Yeah, I think a little <laughs> bit is made too much of the the size thing with the sharks because yeah. I know the sharks won a lot of size in this draft. Yeah. But last draft they didn't. So I don't know. Sure. I, I think and they've had just so many team. drafts in the past where they've taken small guys and Right, even the Mike Rear era too. So I mean sure. it's one of those like degree things where like maybe size was like a 30% matter and uh, a 30% thing under under the Wilsons but maybe with Mike it's like a 50% thing so it does sure. matter but it's not a all encompassing thing though I think people uh, forget that Svoboda as well as going to college for the first mm. time um, after playing in the USHL for the past couple of years so that'll be an interesting thing because he's never been in uh, point producer at the USHL really kind of around the 0.5 points per game or so but had a really good summer um really great summer showcase and you could argue that he was the best sharks prospect at the summer showcase or at mm -hmm. least the most kind of impressive Mino sure. musty was there and musty was doing musty things but i don't sure. think anybody expected Svoboda to be as impactful as he was right yeah and people expect Svoboda to probably make the team depending on how he does at this in college point, right yeah you have to start well in your college here or else you're, you're still not probably going to make it but like if he's not getting any minutes and he's playing fourth line and like doing nothing, then right. they might they might not take him, regardless of how well he did the World Junior Summer Showcase. But uh, one thing about Savoda I'll say too is mm. that he's a guy that I I sent this my list of my top ten and my honorable mentions, which changed after sending it to some people. But I sent it to a half dozen or or so NHL scouts. NHL front office people, NHL coaches, whatever, right? Just a mix of people, right? To to get their get their get their opinions. And Sobodo was a guy that wasn't on my honorable mentions list, not because I didn't I just forgot about him. <laughs> so I had a long list. I just forgot about sure. him. And someone reminded me, hey, put put Swoboda on there. And I was like, Oh yeah, that's that's my mistake. He definitely after that summer showcase at least deserves to be on here. Sure. Um, Havilid is on your honorable mentions as well. Our honorable mentions on yours too. I don't, is he on mine as well? Did he didn't make your top ten, did he? No, he Havlid? did not. Yeah. No, he did not. I, I um, no, I I, I like Havilid. I just uh, the the all I've heard about him from the like the side of like the sharks and, and signing it was like, Oh yeah, we'll see how about Havlid coming over eventually. And I'd never mm -hmm. get it like this. Like I'm super pumped about Havlid and I thought his world juniors was just okay. Right. And maybe there's just a little bit of stagnation in terms of his development. Um, it'll be a big year to see if he can finally start putting up points to the level that he should be for an offensive defenseman in, in Sweden at this age. Um, and also, undersized as well small right. but decent i guess <laughs> i think it's fair to say a guy like him a guy like lun right uh, sure. both 2022 guys too that they it's it's not like their stock has totally dropped but sure. i don't i wouldn't say that it's risen in terms of being second round guys that oh now in a redraft these guys are going to first round no both yeah. guys probably would fall in the draft a little bit but not, but they're still in a, in a range of, and they have shown enough that mm -hmm. they can easily turn it around with a big year. But they need to do that, though. They need to have big years, though, for sure. And the Sharks have just added so many picks and so many better prospects that have just kind of pushed down these guys, especially sure. like Havilland. Good point. Um, and Lund, I guess. So there's guys like Pole Camp and Svoboda are kind of like climbing up from wherever they were. And I feel like the other ones are kind of either staying steady or, or falling a bit just because the Sharks have picked up so many guys i think the first the first time we maybe not that we did this list maybe maybe the 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 last iteration of the podcast with with nick shout out to nick that nick? lund might have been a top five guy back then 
Might have. And so I think that does speak to sort of, I mean, I think, I, I think when we get to our top five or six, that the, the prospect list from 2022, none of them except for Eklund would, would be in that top five or six. <laughs> right. And yeah. actually I used to tell the story a lot, uh, not, not relevant anymore, but Back in the days when Ryan Merkley was the Sharks' best prospect, I asked another a scout for another organization that was very deep in prospects, and I asked them, where would Ryan rank in your organization's list of your group of prospects if you guys got Ryan Merkley for free? And he laughed and said, maybe number seven, maybe number eight. <laughs> yeah. And things now the Sharks get up. to laugh at our teams now. <laughs> yeah, things are looking up. <laughs> Uh, Colin Graff is in both of our honorable mentions. I, I have liked the photograph. I think, uh, <laughs> the photograph, <laughs> the photograph from what I've seen of his preseason game that he played, um, looked pretty good. I, he looked a little faster to me. That, that, sure. that was noticeably different for, from the end of the year last year and something that I thought he needed to improve on. And I think he did. Um, it's obviously tough to tell just from the limited time I've seen him, but he does look faster. Yeah, he looked good in rookie faceoff too, quicker, mm -hmm. a little bit bigger. But these are all things that I think he'll need more experience. Yeah. And he'll need a bit of a jump still too in terms of just those elements of quickness and yeah. size and strength. Not quite there yet for the NHL. Of course, we know he played last year, but mm -hmm. yeah, I think that's... He kind of reminds me of just the way that he plays. And this, this is gonna you're going to sneer at him because you never liked this guy. But he kind of reminds me of Jacob Peterson in the way that he plays a little bit. Oh, with a little right. bit more, a touch more physicality, I think. Mm -hmm. But like the way that he connects plays and, and kind of, he can be um, ahead of the play and, and kind of read the ice pretty well at some points. Um, but uh, he's still young. He's got Yeah, time. well, honestly, I mean, I was never a big fan of Jacob Peterson, the I know. player. Nice I mean, kid. his play style reminds me of Jacob but Peterson, I guess. He'll need a little more of the stay in the NHL, though. We'll, we'll, leave it, we'll leave it at that. I agree. I think he, and just like Jacob Peterson, needed some more to stay in the NHL as well. Mm -hmm. He needs some more time. Yeah. I suspect he will be in the Barracuda, but I think it'll look good in the Barracuda. I'm not sure. I, I, I wonder about how everything will translate in terms of, yeah, he's a little bit stronger, a little bit faster, but mm -hmm. I'm not sure if, if that will be immediate in terms of sort of like he's going to be a immediate 50 point top six guy in the AHL. Do you think, do you think kills he'll do that? Like he'll be a no, I transitions think, pretty smooth for him. No, I think in the forties first points, maybe like okay. low forties, I think probably would make more if he plays a full season. I think the strength thing, I, 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 I wonder because he is stronger, but I don't know if he still not there yet. Yeah. Not, I'm not sure if he's quite there and he's not as like quick as let's say a, a good, like where he can get away with being, yeah being uh slight yeah being a more slight yeah so oh the photograph but free a uh, free agent pickup so right and again another guy that most organizations he's a top 10 guy or at least at the back end of a top 10 and here he's not mm -hmm. he's not quite quite there that says a lot about organization once again also, our next player, Jake Furlong, I have to shout out Greg Revac, who's on Twitter. Mm. He, he probably was not paying attention to this, but he <laughs> he would not do a trade for me in, in my fantasy league. And I was giving him Jamie Benn, and he would not do what? the trade unless I included Jake Furlong from my team to his team. Like, he was just like, got to give me Jake Furlong. It was like a, it was a complicated <laughs> trade. And like, what is uh, what is uh, for fantasy? What does Drake Furlong give you? Is it uh, blocks, hits? I don't know. What do what do you, what do you think? Well, anyway? it's like it's all it's future points, stuff, right? right? Okay. It, no, it would all be yeah, because this is a very it's category league, and like four of the categories are defensive, like hits, blocks, penalty oh, minutes, okay. time on ice, shorthanded is a okay. category. So uh, okay, that guys would be that, a good Furlong category. Yeah, guys that play defensive defense and actually have value in this league, which is why they made it like that to give those guys like your defensive centers and defenders right. some value. Um, 
So yeah, he was like, I gotta have Jake Furlong, man. And um, <laughs> your blockbuster trade. Yeah. I was trading Jamie Ben, and he really cared about Jake Furlong. <laughs> it it uh it collapsed because of Jake Furlong. No, no, it went through. I I gave him Jake, I gave oh, him Jake did. Furlong. You, you gave, I gave up. Jake up. Furlong? <laughs> I gave up on Jake Furlong, which is really sad because I drafted him two years ago when the Sharks did on like the seventh round or something. Uh, oh, let's uh, also Greg Rivak. Um, he's better known on Twitter, and he has his own. So you should promote him properly. So yeah, it's actually uh, I don't know his. I think it's like Coach Rivak. C. Uh, I got to look it up. No, it's in it. Um, hockey Arsenal. Hockey's art. That's what it is. Yeah, yeah hockey. Right. Hockey's, hockey's Arsenal. Arsenal right? At yeah. Coach Rivak on Twitter. Yeah, yeah. he um, has been all around hockey. He's a great hockey coach, and I think he used to do some advising for different clubs and such I, I won't i don't actually know but smart guy and uh swindled smart guy me out wanted of, jake furlong. <laughs> he wanted jake furlong so that should tell you about uh, the value of furlong actually his last preseason game I think who mentioned it was it uh warsofsky or he looked good yeah he looked somebody good. said I mean, he looked it was like an older like yeah. an older player or was it he you definitely has that style that defensive yeah. style and i did speak with a scout not greg revac that said that he thinks that that Furlong could end up in like a Dylan DeMello type. Mm. So that's a pretty good, that's pretty that's good. Type. That's not, not bad at all for, I think, what was he a fourth round pick? Uh, uh, some, some couple years back. So we'll, we'll see, but fifth round, he's, I think fifth round. So anyway, he was, he's, the, he's, uh, he was the pick we got for Jake Middleton. Oh, okay. Okay. One of the picks with, with, um, Cabo So Continue. don't write off, don't write off Furlong. Yeah, and don't and don't trade that. him. Don't trade. Them. <laughs> I couldn't get I couldn't get the deal to go through unless well, I had. What was the trade? Um, I, I was basically it's the last year of Jake for or no of Jamie Ben's contract at like nine point five million dollars. And my you guys, team, you guys have salary cap in your league. Yeah, it's got salary oh, okay. cap, and it's all based on the NHL salary cap. And my team won the won the championship last season, so I'm rebuilding. So I'm trying to retool. Um, and I ended up getting like Akira Schmidt, Morgan Barron, a draft pick, and uh, something else. So I just basically just sold Jamie Ben because he was oh, expensive. You needed, a, you needed a cap. So it was a, it was a cap dump. So basically, so they had a cap dump. You had to. I had to get Jake a Jake Furlong, um, and I got Akira Schmidt, which is like a decent number three goaltender. <laughs> <laughs> this is a very, it's an interesting league. I love this league. <laughs> Uh, if Greg, if you're listening, I'm gonna demand Jake for a long back somehow in a trade, because Greg's going for the championship. I beat Greg at the end of of last season. Yeah. Like it, we were the two best teams by far, and we just happened to line up in the conference finals, not the regular finals. Um, and I beat him, and so now he's like going all out this year. He's gonna win this thing, hopefully. But I'm like, uh, all right, I'm going out. Classic, like I'm gonna. I'm gonna make a trade for now with for Jamie Ben, but I I need something for the future a little bit though. So Jake for I, I can appease the fans and tell them that I'm not I, that I'm thinking about the future still. So yep, exactly. <laughs> He's got a really good team. I sold my my soul to get a, a win. Um, now I have to rebuild, and I did acquire Shakir Mukamadula in a in a trade. So uh, over the summer, I got him for uh, selling uh, Josh Morrissey. I got a first. Broberg and Muka Medulla and a third for Morrissey, which ended oh. up being a really good trade. Interesting package. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, this is this is just fantasy hockey. Too. Yeah, yeah. Let's 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 uh yeah, we're <laughs> let's talk we're, about we're not even into the top ten yet. <laughs> we're forty minutes in. <laughs> let's talk about Jack Thompson. Okay. Uh because this will start our first um who's gonna make the training camp and the for the defense right. discussion. Right, oh. and I think that um, before we talk about Jack himself, right, kind of to set the picture, right, Mugen with Doolin and Vlasic are out right sure. now. Not sure when they'll be back. And so right now, the Sharks' defense in terms of who looks the most ancient already, right, the obvious guys are Ferraro, Wallman, Ruda, uh, Benning. Uh, who else are we talking about? Oh, Henry Thrun and missing one more guy. Uh, Oh, CC, CC, CC. Forgot so, about CC. Yeah, right. Because Charles just acquired him. So that's six guys there. So there's a wide open spot, number seven. Yep. It's not going to be Tease. I don't believe it's going to be Luca Cagnoni. I don't think he's close to ready. We'll get to that in a second. But Jack Thompson, the argument for him is obviously 
He is very experienced. He was the HL All Star last year. Warsawski has said that, hey, here's a guy that can move the puck, and that's really really important. The Sharks have talked a lot about in terms of one, a big thing they want to change defensively is that they want to make sure they can get the puck out quick. Yeah, and they weren't able to do that last year, and they're still going to have trouble this year because they didn't acquire six Eric Carlson, so <laughs> they're still going to have some trouble. But Jack Thompson maybe can help in that area because Jack Thompson can move the puck a bit. Yeah. So I think there is a lot of, lot of questions about about Jack's game. We'll have to see how he defends. He's not the biggest guy. He is willing though, so I'll give him that credit. He's not going to be, despite his actual production, he's not going to be a PP one kind of guy to right anything like that, right? So you have to kind of manage expectations. But maybe he has, he can be a solid defenseman. And he is another guy. I think that when the Sharks acquired him from Tampa Bay, according to a list from the Athletic, at least. Thompson was like a top five lightning prospect. Granted, the lightning system is has been decimated, right, Not by yeah. by their attempts to win a Stanley Cup. But still, that's a top prospect in another system in the Sharks, maybe top 15. And so I think, again, that's another kind of says a lot about the Sharks system once again. But mm-hmm. it's going to be really interesting. He's a guy, I'll admit, the first couple of games – preseason i've been watching him as closely but i'm gonna start watching him a bit more closely to see if i think that he can defend well enough to to be okay at the angel level i'm not really sure i'm not really sure about that right now but he is sort of the best choice and Mm -hmm. at the moment and he is sort of when we talked about in the summer the sharks top eight which included mukudula and vlasic Thompson was sort of the number nine on the depth chart for me. And so now he's yeah. obviously moved up with the injuries, but it also makes me think that the sharks might be players like they were last year in waivers and waivers will be, will come and play more as we get near the end of camp. And so maybe somebody like the sharks picked up Emerson last year, maybe Emerson will become available again. Of course, right. We joke about that, but maybe somebody like that though, that I can see if the sharks aren't healthy, that maybe they'll take a stab at somebody. Yeah, I liked what I've seen from him. Uh, moving the puck, he, he seemed pretty confident and wasn't turning it over a ton and making a ton of mistakes, and I, I liked that. Um, yeah, I, I think you're you're looking for guys that can do exactly what he does, and the Sharks don't have a lot of them. They, they, they're they better this year, I will say, from breaking out, it looks like, but um, he could help, so... I wouldn't be surprised Maybe. if he does. I don't know if he can do it at the NHL level, too. That's Yeah, you can do it at the NHL preseason level. That's right, like. which is basically <laughs> AHL, and he's an NHL yeah. All-Star, so he yeah. should be able to do that. Kind of knows about it. Yeah. Kind of sees this level. Um, but we'll see. And it also depends, right, like how long this whole Vlasic thing is actually a thing. Is this like Mookum a... I, I, yeah, and Mookum Madulin as well. Is this like a, a Vlasic just didn't want to participate in the first two weeks training camp? Or is this like a <laughs> he's actually injured kind of thing? The reports we've been getting about Warsawski's training camp and how, how hard it's been, and I've maybe. seen it too. That, yeah, maybe maybe the guys are like, yeah, you know what? Um, I'm going to take a couple weeks off here. I, I, I'm i just joking. There's no way anyone would do that if they want to be taking seriously. They want to get but, paid $7 million. <laughs> right, right. Or even Mookum Madulin, if you want to yeah, spot. You, you can't of course not. Breaks like that, but no, I just sure. wanted to think though. It, it has been a hard training camp for sure, and yeah. the players have have to a man. Everybody has said that this is a very Tough. very hard training camp, and I think it's. Oh, I actually didn't uh, didn't didn't. I was meaning to write about. It. I'll mention it very briefly that it kind of fits with the idea though. Uh, very briefly, I know it's a little bit of a side, but David Quinn was, I think, a little more of a players' coach. A uh, little wasn't cracking the whip as much, which I think I totally understood. A lot of people still get on on Quinn for lack of structure, all that kind of stuff. With the team he had last year, flogging structure, flogging practices. There weren't a lot of practices at the end of last year. What would the point be, in my opinion? I I, I get that. It's just yeah, you're trying to just get to the you're, tr- you're just trying to get to the final game of the season mm-hmm. last year, and. But it makes sense so that you have a guy like that and then you go with the opposite. And that's a common cycle that we see in coaching that you go from, OK, we have a Daryl Sutter type. And we're, let's talk about the Kings, right, uh, from a few years ago. We have a Daryl Sutter type, a hard ass. OK, the player revolt, players don't like him. We got we got to go softer. So then we get John Stevens. We have the guy who is sort of a player's coach as assistant coach back then for us. Right. And that's a common sort of like you go. Yeah. 
you go you go you go uh, uh soft to to hard or vice versa another one actually mentioned by by it's drew an x-rated podcast great way to go <laughs> <laughs> right. uh, but not one mentioned by Drew, by Drew Romenda, not not X-rated, and actually also mentioned by S.J. Shorky, who's a big time commenter, reader, listener. So shout out to to Scott. Yeah. But anyway, though Kevin Constantine, who I know has had a lot of things attached to his name, he also <laughs> was on our podcast too. Yeah. But what Constantine did though to the Sharks, moving on from George Kingston. George Kingston, the first coach of the Sharks, described as a gentleman, et cetera, et cetera. Also, the Sharks won 28 games in two years. So, okay. Kevin Constantine comes in, and he gets 30-plus wins out of the Sharks. He gets them into the playoffs, and he gets them the first great playoff moment, the upset of the Detroit Red Wings in the 94 playoffs. And I'll get more into that later. I'm not going to get too deep into it right now, but that's sort of Warsawski. There's a little bit of that. Of that. Okay, you guys yep. had it had it a little bit easier maybe and now we've got to we've got to rev it up and so there's a little bit of that going on right now okay um i i think that uh, is that all of our, our um we have one more honorable well one more debatable one so yes because i have one person you have one person in your top 10 that i don't right and, and right, the other right. way around so how do we want to play it? Oh, uh, why don't you go first with with your guy? Because this, maybe this will surprise people because he's he's yeah. a popular prospect that, that did not uh, make your list. It's Casper Haltonen, and he's he's not like far down. He's not like twenty. He's probably eleven, um, and it's like right on the borderline. I think uh, I like what Casper Haltonen can do, and the highlights are very high, and you can see them, and they are apparent. What he's very very good at. Um, I think the, the problem is again, what we've talked about forever. It's just, it's got a, the game has to round out enough to be useful at even strength. Right. And so far, I don't think I've seen that from this training camp when we'll see, like he's still eligible for the AHL. Like he could go to the AHL instead of going back to juniors. Um, and I think I, I think wanted, he should be in juniors though. I think, I we think probably, so too, but I, yeah. I kind of wanted him to have a little bit more mm. to, to like a little bit more of a case like uh no i'm ready to play against men and my game has come a little bit and i don't think it has so we'll, we'll or you know maybe they decide they need a power play shooter at the barracuda and they put him in the barracuda but i think as, as opposed to a guy like canyoni who also could go back to you know juniors or go to the ehl he's kind of like i'm taking this spot and it doesn't feel like halton is making the same case from the same draft year so. Right, right, right. I think that's though those are fair arguments uh, against Casper. Mm -hmm. uh, I will add to that. I did talk to a scout that said that basically that yeah, he's got a. I, I have Halton a bit higher, but he said mm -hmm. I don't think so. I think that Halton, like you suggest, needs to have more to his game to sure. to really be a, a, be a, a more highly considered prospect in the system. Mm -hmm. Other people though like him still and think, okay, he, he's fine where he was on my list. So, sure. but yeah, I think that's, and the highlights that's, are high, you know, highlights like, are high. Yeah. You, you can see them when they, when he starts ripping up juniors, so it's going to be putting up three goals at night and I'm going to look dumb, but still has some way to go. I think, I think he is better than last year, but mm -hmm. it's not enough of a difference that, yeah, I think that he should be in the AHL. So I do agree on that. I think conditioning is better, but again, not at the level where quickness is better, but not at the level that, that it needs to be to yep. be an impact guy. My guy, uh, that might just miss guy, we'll probably talk about a bit because you love him, so males will just get to him right here. We'll talk all yeah. about him right He's now. He's my 10th is... prospect anyway. So. Yes, and he actually was originally in my top 10. And yep. I got talked out of him. Oh boy! And as I was, as we we're setting, getting ready for the podcast, I thought maybe I should put him back in. But I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna stick to my. Actually, yeah, well, they, they don't even run my guns because he was in my top ten originally. But it is the Neil Gushin. Gushin is my, he is my number eleven prospect, and he really is tied with my number ten, I would say, but are very, very close. But, and actually, this is kind of funny. I thought of all the people I talked to. I think they like Gushin a, a, a bit more than my number 10, but I'm going with maybe a little bit of Phil. Also, too, Gushin is older, too. He's a 2020 yes. draft pick. So his time, basically, this year is, or maybe next year, but 
that, that that's it for him as a prospect. And then he then he falls into a different category of player. So Gushin, I will say though that that I may feel very dumb about this because I've been a Gushin supporter. I've usually had Gushin over Bordalo the last couple of years, even when it wasn't popular. Yeah, <laughs> and I over true. the last year it's become popular. But like, uh, yeah, I, I've had I've had Gushin uh, higher usually, and I will say one thing that we have seen a preseason. It's just preseason, but. He does look quicker, and that's the thing that I always wondered about him. That is he going to be quick enough? Is he small, obviously, and yes. quick NHL quick? And granted, it's just preseason, but he does look quicker than last year, even though the level of competition isn't so high right now. So I want to see him against obviously NHL competition, but that's a big part of it. So if he has, if that quickness is real, yeah, then that if he has like extra half step or step, then that's going to get him. That's going to allow him to gain the middle in the in the zone and to shoot. Which is what what he should be doing. He gained the gained the zone and shoot. That's basically basically should be basically what he does on an offensive cycle. <laughs> mm. And he was able to do that obviously against the Ducks yesterday in the Thursday night exhibition game. He led the Sharks with ten shot attempts and four shots. And the Sharks didn't have a lot of offense. They only had nineteen shots the whole game. And sure. Gushin was the best source of offense in that game, even better than William Eklund and other more experienced players. So. Gushin may 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 put this kind of he he may put this all in the dust and he may establish himself with the Sharks this year, and this is what one scout said about him that he probably have Gushin higher than ten even on 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 the on the Sharks on his top ten Sharks, and obviously has already been an AHL All Star, but he looks even better this year, and yeah. I didn't really see that so much in the scrimmages, mm-hmm. and. In practice, so much, but I will admit though, the scrimmages I was watching Celebrini, I was watching yeah. Smith, I was watching Musty, so I wasn't watching Gushin as, Gushin as closely. But it is clear though that he has been one of the best Sharks preseason players, not just the the last game, but even the the second game against Anaheim, where he wasn't even great, but the the Sharks were even worse, and he was yeah. still one of the better players on the ice. And I will say one more thing too, that we remember Gushin scoring a hat trick in the preseason a couple of years ago, but that those are just, he was right, right place, right time, that sort of thing. Right. But this is a much better, this is a better player overall player though. Uh, so yeah. I, I think that's, that's, that's uh if you just compare the tape, there, just stronger, quicker, more yeah, puck he's, dominant. Yeah, so. He's creating his own offense rather than just like leeching off of the, um, you know the the players that he's playing with. It's like he's the guy that's that's leading the leading the rush. He's right. the guy that's carrying the puck in. He's finding the finding the hole, making the um, getting the shot attempts. And yeah, he he led the Sharks with you know ten shot attempts, and then he hit one off the post for a goal. That oh, was right, like mm-hmm. right there, and he got two assists. So like he had two super creative passes that not super creative. One was like t- you know tic tac toe, whatever, but like. Then, you know, he had two assists on top of all of those shooting attempts. So it's not like he's only just a a shooter, but he should, with his shot, try to use that to be as the standout skill for him to make the NHL. But I agree, he looks faster. He he looks quicker than I remember him last year. Obviously, last year is a long year, so it's tough to say. Like, he might have been qu- quicker in the beginning and started to get slower as the year right, went on. Right, right, right. He got banged up and stuff, right? Yeah, but he does. He looks quicker. And he, off the rush and maybe a touch touch stronger like a touch it's still right. not there but like a little bit he doesn't need to be much he doesn't need to be very strong no one's asking him to be clean yeah. costing right yeah and i want to has to hold the puck and he has to absorb right. pressure and i think right. i see i saw him do that a few times or i was like okay he at least absorbed that check and made the next mm. play sneaky play on robin's goal if you watch it before cardwell separates regenda mm-hmm. from the puck uh, Gushin four checks. I'm not sure who it was, but he stopped that guy from getting a touch on a puck. I don't remember who he he took. Mm-hmm. It was a bigger player, a bigger defenseman. I think he took him to the to the wall and was able to. I'm not sure. I, I gotta watch the replay again, but 
But that that basically yep. allowed the puck to get to Regenda, but then Carwell was then able to take it there. And of course, Kushin pops in front, and then Kushin's soft skill takes over and he he finds Robbins. But that little play, that little bit of strength there. Uh, uh Warsawski mentioned another play too that I actually don't remember what it was, but he said in the first period that that Gushin was doing something very good on the forecheck. And these are the plays that Gushin has always had the ability that if you give him a chance to score, he'll score. But that's you don't always get that in the NHL. You get that maybe like once a game if you're lucky in the NHL that you just find yourself in a position, right? Mm-hmm. You need to do other things to keep yourself in there. So there's never been a question, even a couple years ago, that if you give Gushin a puck 15 feet away from the net and no one around him, can he score? Yeah, he has a better chance than most guys of doing that, but he's got to do other things. So I think that's another good part of it, too, that we are talking about other things about him. We're not just talking about, oh, hey, did you see what he did on that pass, on that shot, that we're talking about other stuff. And I want to mention one more point that that you – when we were talking earlier that 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 you brought up this is a maybe a little bit of a of a slight digression but so and this is a shout out but i'm i'm kind of i i'm, I'm kind of subtweeting you here too no it's not a subtweet because i mentioned you here so uh gram slam yt on twitter oh Graham. i know, I know you, Graham. yeah right yeah no he 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 follows us i assume he listens to us so oh, yeah. so he mentioned about quentin musty who we'll get to that Quentin Musty was played with, with Sturm and Cost, and not just Graham. A lot of Sharks fans were like, oh, you're not giving Quentin Musty. You're not giving kind of our, our first-round pick, our golden boy. You're mm-hmm. not giving him a good chance with, with, with good NHL players or the best NHL players. And I mentioned that, hey, if you need to play with the best players to produce, that you don't belong in NHL yet. And you made a great point with Gushin. Who was Gushin playing with yesterday? He's playing with Colin White, who's going to be in the AHL this year. He's playing with Cardwell, who's a good player, but – Carl will also NHL. probably start the year in the AHL too. And look what Gushin did. Gushin was the best. I talked to a, a scout who watched that game. He said Gushin was the best shark out there. We saw it too. I, you don't need a scout <laughs> to confirm that. But yeah. just if you're not sure that beyond the the offensive level, but the overall level, that that's what people saw yesterday. And so you can do so. Basically, when whoever you're 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 put out there with in a preseason and practice, if it's it, just because it's, it's not, you're not getting to play with Macklin Celebrini or Mikhail Granlin or whatever, you got to show something. And Gushin did. And so I, that's the bar. And so anyway, yeah. I want to, it's not about Musty yet. We're going to get to Musty later, but. Yeah. And, and yeah. like in the preseason guys, like Sturm and Cunnan are probably one of some of the better players. Or Costin. The yep. Mm-hmm. Or Costin. Yeah. They're, they're some of the better players in the yeah. ice overall. They're not they're offensively legit oriented. Players, especially Sturm. But, yeah. Yes. Yeah, but, but they are. Good. And you want to see even like, yeah, every game like Gushin's on like the third line and even like he started in the second power play and got bumped up to the first because mm-hmm. they recognized that he was doing well. He and, was having that good a game. Warsawski said it was the best game that he's seen Gushin play. Yeah. And I think a lot of people after the first game when he had a goal and an assist uh, were like, ah, is, you know, Gushin's back. And even I didn't believe it because I thought the first game was OK. Like he looked that goal was sweet. But then, like, he had a ton of turnovers, and right. he gave the puck up um, a few times and then misplays in the power play where he was nervous and holding onto the puck for too long. And um, so I didn't think it was the strongest game, even though he put up the points. And then this game, it was like, all right, he's way more comfortable. He's, you know, being the goose he can be, <laughs> being the best goose he can be. He's uh, he's on my number 10. Um, mm. But then that's only because they've added, again, guys in the top 10 that have I think in the end of the day if everything comes together for Daniel Gushin at his age he's going to be a if everything comes together a decent middle six scorer and that's they've added guys that like we're hoping they're top six so I think that's why he's number 10 for me but I do right. still believe in him question and I wish I could do that mm. in, a, in a Dwight Schrute voice or a Jim question. Halper doing a Dwight Schrute voice but which bears question. best <laughs> <laughs> Do you think that Gushin will score 20 goals in this season in NHL? Oh, like ever? Yeah. I mean, I said, so yeah, th- that's kind of a middle six, and he's a more offensive guy, so 20 is not. A, Can I answer not... after he makes the NHL? <laughs> okay. But my next question is. I was. I thought you were gonna say yes to the NHL, but then my next question is: Does he do that with the Sharks? <laughs> mm-hmm. These are too many questions. I think. Um, uh. I I think. Well, you seem pained. (laughs) 
I, I honestly, because Gushin's such a boomer bus prospect, right? If he makes the NHL, I think yes. If he's like a regular NHLer, I think he has the all the skill to, to do well, it. Well, but you're saying if he has, I mean, I'm saying, well, he sees the ice time. Of course, if you give if you give him 20 minutes of ice time, maybe he's not any good. Well, he'll score 20 goals. But well, I was going honestly going to come into this in, into this week talk yeah. like talking about how I don't think the Sharks are trying to give him a real opportunity at this because all of the preseason lines were him with all the AHLers. All of the preseason lines were like, these are our guys we think are in the NHL. And then we're putting Gushin with Colin White and Philip Bistad and, and Cardwell and whoever. And it, it, it felt like they were just like, okay, we're putting Goose in the AHL. But doesn't it feel good though that, and this is a challenge for anybody that you say, fuck you to that. <laughs> yeah, no, I know. He's right? looking good. He and says, you get yourself you. onto the top power play, which is what sure. he did. He started yesterday, like you mentioned, on the on second power play unit. And so, okay, I you're not, you, 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 I'm hedging. I, uh, you, I'm you're, hedging. You're afraid to answer my question. So, <laughs> mm. honestly, uh, I can't answer it either. So, <laughs> I know. I don't have a. I don't have a way to. I don't have a way to predict it. I will say no. How's that? Okay. Right. <laughs> I think it's more likely that he, um, just based on all of the things like his his age profile and his size, that he he never makes the NHL. Okay. But I that doesn't mean that I don't obviously see the obvious skill. I think that's also a, a flaw in scouting. A lot of times, is people fall in love with prospects so much that they they um, will stake their claim and and then like never back down. When it's like, I don't know. I see why Gushin could definitely bust in, mm. in the world. Um, but I love him. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel's going to see this podcast and be like, why does this guy love me so much? Why does he I, love me and hate me? <laughs> I want to see love me, but never think I'm going to make the NHL. Think I'll make it. <laughs> I think it's like a 45% chance he makes the NHL. And like a 55, he doesn't. So How about uh, he is a 20 goal scorer? I think if he makes it, it's a 45% chance. Oh, okay. 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 All right. He's just got a stick. And like a team has to actually believe in him long enough. Because he also, whatever he gets up a level, struggles for a while. Like mm -hmm. when he gets up to the OHL, struggled for like a couple weeks. When he went to the AHL, struggled for a couple weeks until he took off and did awesome. So when he gets to the NHL, I think he's going to struggle for a while. And he has to... He has to find a coach and a system that's going to allow him to struggle while like going through those growing pains. I don't know if that's the Sharks. I really don't. Okay. Because okay. I think they have a ton of guys in the way, and mm -hmm. they want to play a different style. So, but I think there is the the obvious skill that that is there. Yeah. Oh, so. like I said, I I I like that we're seeing improvement from last year because I've harped on it a lot with Gushin that. Yeah as good as he was last year in the AHL that I didn't think that he had upped the strength and quickness enough in the mm -hmm. off season. And it looks like the quickness part at least is, is there and the strength. So he's only so strong that he can make himself. So if sure. the quickness can compensate for that and he might, he might've, he might've done it. So we'll, we'll see. So I'm very, changing my vote to, I'm changing my vote to yes. I, I, I'd rather go down <laughs> with the ship and say yes. Go down the goose. I'd rather go down and like be the bottom of the ocean and be wrong. With goose. Yeah. And you know, then be super pissed at it and say yes and believe in it. Yeah. You know? Okay. Okay. That's fair. So, saying All right. Yes. So, <laughs> <laughs> Daniel is your number 10 pro. So I guess why don't yes. we go in this order then since you already started off. So we'll sure. go with your, 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 your number first, your guy sure. first and then my guy. So great. My guy is, is Luca Cagnoni. Got and it. let's, we'll talk about, we'll talk about him. Uh, I think you have him. I don't know where you have, we'll find out where you have him. But um, anyway, though, so mm -hmm. everybody that I texted or talked to, I asked them this question when I sent this list to them, I was like, because Gushin, Kenyon like I Gush? said, was, yeah, Gushin or Cagnoni, and Gushin was in my top 10 at first. And I think in the end that, well, I'll, I'll tell you why in the end I think I have Cagnoni. But actually, most of the people I talked to, I I didn't take like a, a vote, but most of them I think actually favored Gushin slightly. Uh, here are some quotes that I got that I probably keep Gushin in the top 10. Gushin and Cagnoni are close. I like Cagnoni, but at his size, that's where I put him outside of the top 10. So these these are three different people telling me this. But one, I have one guy really stumped for Cagnoni. That's one. And then mm -hmm. I think the main thing, though, is that the, the age difference. That's, that's a big part of it. And so even though... 
Cagnoni has not, they both have the size problem, but the thing, but the other thing that Cagnoni, it's a big, big problem is defense. He's the defenseman. And so that's another major issue too. Gushin as a winger, the bar is a lot, is, is a lot lower for him to make an angel impact. Yep. So though, those are the things that, that gave me a lot of pause, but anyway, so I'm going to go with Cagnoni just because of the age, because he is a, a much younger than, than Gushin. And what I have seen in, in rookie faceoff and in the preseason games is I've seen a guy that is good on a power play, that is good offensively, and we thought that that would be the case, but I would say that I am impressed by that. I thought that, and I did say this, I think, in a rookie faceoff episode from last week, I thought there might be more of an adjustment for Cagnoni to a higher level of of, off, of offense, a uh, higher level of power play quarterbacking. And so far, he's looked good. He's yeah. looked good in preseason games and in the scrimmages, too. I don't think that he's looked exceptional, like not in it, like put him in the NHL even close, even as a specialist, too, not even close. His de- defense is still rough. I I watched. So he's a guy that during the scrimmages, I, I didn't watch as closely. I did watch, but not as closely. And I started watching him more closely a couple days ago as sort of the more he's accrued more buzz and whatnot. Right. And yesterday I watched him very close against Anaheim. I mm-hmm. saw a guy that still is not going to defend at this right now. It, it still has a lot to work to do defensively. And I, I wrote that in my game notes. Escapability is still an issue with him. Obviously the size, just that part, right. He's willing. That's a big part of it. That's great. But that's not quite enough, and he doesn't need to be a great defender, but he's got to be okay at least, and he's not even close to that, so he's going to need some time in the AHL. But I do like him more than I did last year, and that's a part of it too, where last year I had him outside my top 10. I know a lot of fans had him in the top 10, and you had you had him in the top 10, I think, right? But yeah. I he didn't quite make it for me. But... I think that I have seen enough that, yeah, I, 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 my opinion of him is higher, but it's still not like write him into the lineup two years from now or a month from now or any time, because I think there's still a lot of question marks and he's not so superior offensively that he can live off that ticket. A lot of people thought that Ryan Merkley could live off of that. And they saw him in Barracuda. They still thought he could live off of that. And no, he, he couldn't. And so we'll see with Cagnoni on, on that score. But mm-hmm. I, I will the, mention, though, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Oh, I just want to finish uh, the one scout who really did love Gushin. Oh, I'm sorry. Cagnoni had him had him. I think this would be number eight on the list. So it's a pretty high. And he he mentioned that in his opinion, that Cagnoni is good enough. They won't have to defend too much. And he compared him to uh, Sam Gerard, where if you put a guy like that with a good partner, good defensive partner that. The offense is 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 going to is going to be enough, and he'll defend well enough when he has to. He mm-hmm. mentioned that Cagnoni's got a good stick and is and and has some nastiness to him too, and so that's that's going to help. So, so that's the that's one scout who really like Cagnoni, and so I wanted to to mention that. So I still have questions again about his sort of escapability and things like that. But yeah. anyway, either or, but. Yeah, we'll talk about Ken Yoni, or I'll talk yeah. about him when we get to, to mine. Um, oh, your your thoughts on him? Okay, sure. Then uh, then uh, uh, now it's your turn, then. Who is your number nine? <laughs> uh, one of uh, Philip Bistat is my number nine. Ooh, okay. Yeah, it's quite a, quite a drop, honestly, looking yeah. back at the... Um, that's a little low. That's pretty low. Um, yeah. I, so I like what I saw from Bistat in the AHL, and I liked what I saw... Or mostly from what I've seen so far in preseason, he's looked pretty good. He, um, I think the thing with Beastad is he's got, he still has a lot of time, but he has to figure out what he's going to be offensively. Um, I don't think he has a standout skill offensively. Like he's a he's a good skater for how big he is. Um, he can carry the puck decently well, but I just don't see the. I don't even know if like the all around offense is at a level that he's going to really be able to produce in a, in a high enough role um, in the NHL. I think ultimately he, he probably slots into a third or fourth line center 
in the NHL just based on his size and his skating and, and a lot of his tools, but he still needs a lot more time. And um, again, nine sounds really low for him, but it's actually not that low. Like the guys above him, I think just are super good. <laughs> I still like Beastat a lot. Um, there was a time when Beastat was in our top five, but sure. that was before we added Askarov and Celebrity and Dickinson and Mukabdullah <laughs> and guys that are very, very clearly, I think, above them. So, yeah. um, and he, he did. When I watched Beastat in Sweden as well, I was never really impressed, mm. um, especially last year. I think that two years ago, he, he looked good at certain points, but last year it was like, he offensively just didn't know what he was doing. He does look a little bit more physical and a little more built now. And hopefully the smaller ice really lends to a more physical, power forwardy game from him that I think he could develop. He just has to, I don't know, pick a lane is almost the way to put it. Like, I, I want to see what the the finished version of Philip Beast that is, because I'm still looking for a lane that he slots into. I remember actually speaking mm-hmm. a couple of years ago, coming out with an article like, is Beastead the Sharks' number two prospect now? Because it was Eklund. Everyone yeah. assumed it was Bordalo, but Bordalo's star was, I think, falling or already a little bit back then. And sure. I, that was a legitimate article for back then. But yeah. And <laughs> um, it was close as well with number eight. Um, okay. Because I think at the end of the day, we'll get there, but number yeah. eight, number nine, I think they both slot in specific parts of a lineup but they have a good shot to do so okay. that's how i would that's how i would phrase okay. it okay well uh i'll share a few thoughts about philip when we get to him on my list sure. then i guess we can yeah we, we'll do you can do it that way and who's your I number nine have i have chernishoff number nine and chernishoff is a big question mark because obviously he's not playing sure. he has a, a long term he's out long term with shoulder surgery he is around san jose a couple of people have asked me that i've seen him around but I think that uh, we're just going off of promise here, right? And scouting reports, basically, because honestly, even in dev camp, I don't know if he was particularly impressive, but he might've been already dealing with his injury. So I, I don't really hold it against him. So this is yeah. purely on, on scouting reports and what people, what people observed of him last year in, in the, in the KHL. But I had one scout I talked to tell me that he likes Turner more than Muka Madulin and one amateur scout. And so that's, I like, you know, I like Mukumadulin. I don't think this guy likes Mukumadulin as much, but regardless, though, that that's still a, a pretty good, uh, pretty good indication of how people value uh, Chernyshov. For sure. But another scout though told me that not as high as Chernyshov kind of bucketed him with Halton in. I don't mm-hmm. know if that that was fair, but just said that they both had size, but they kind of need more elements to be considered in your. And in in and the seven, eight, nine range of sharks prospects. A very again, very deep pool. So so yeah. I have that in mind, but I think with him though, it's sort of a, a holding place for him that I'm leaving him this spot for now. And then and then we'll see when he gets healthy. He can lose by this time next year, he might be out of here, right? But uh out of this this list, I mean this top ten list, but uh we'll see on him. And then just looking at this, I think this six to like Nine, ten, a range is very, very close. Like on yours, and uh, seven, eight. I think the top seven. six. I think, I think yeah. there's a yeah, clear yeah, top yeah. six, right? Yeah. In, in the in the prospect them, and I'll be honest too. The seven and past that, good chance that they flip. Like, yeah, most of them, most of them don't don't really become impact angel players. To be honest, for a lot of different reasons, right? Size, sure. um, well roundedness of of game consistency conditioning so all these all these all these elements so so yeah so i wouldn't get too stressed out like i think that for me at least that seven through 11 or 12 of sharks prospects are pretty interchangeable i don't know if you agree with that and so that's why even though i was surprised they had beast at nine it's not yeah it's not, it's not huge. It's, it's, if you had Beastead in your top five or he had Beastead in like, as your 15th 14. best prospect, that That's would be shocking. But yeah. anyway, so, okay. So let's go on to your number eight then. Luca Cagnoni. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> there it is. Um, I think before this, like, um, before the preseason, I think he'd probably be like 10, 11, mm-hmm. uh, to be honest. But it's, it means a lot when he can come in and play against, which is essentially AHL competition and look really decent, um, especially offensively. Um, 
he's not trying to do too much and he never did in juniors. I was just kind of worried that to try and be, you know, to try and stand out that he would start throwing the puck away and start mm. making stupid mistakes with the puck. And he hasn't, um, he's still making smart passes generally. There's still a few in there that are kind of dumb, right? But, um, and he's using his feet a little bit. He does have, um, he's not slow, slow. He has good edges, but I think you're right. I think you mentioned it either. We've talked about it already, or it was before we started recording that like maybe his escapability isn't the best. I well, think. like I, 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 it's been, it's been mentioned before in my comments too, that yeah. I, I know the readers did not like one of the scouts that compared him not favorably to Kalen Addison. I honestly, it's, I see the comparison, but I also think people need to realize that, you know, Canyoni's 19 and Addison was 24 exactly. last year. Uh, that's fair. Yeah. So Canyoni's but got Addison five years though, of development. Was, as a 19 though, was a very highly regarded prospect. Sure. And so, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't really remember Kalen Addison at 19. <laughs> I do remember him at twenty four. He was a second round kinda, pick. That's yeah, second yeah, round yeah. pick though. That's that's what I that's what I that's, mean. So. so he's definitely a higher pick than than yeah. Canyoni was. Um, I don't know. I think he he's going to need time, and I think he will see some action in, at, at some point in the NHL. Maybe this season if we get a ton of injuries, or probably next year. But I don't think he's making camp with the Sharks. So everybody keeps wanting that because he he does play pretty well on the power play. But You're it's not like doing a service to there's so players. much. Yeah, yeah. There's so much more that he has to Forcing do. Forcing Musty, a Cagnoni in the lineup. You're not doing any favors to these guys. Yeah, um, but I will say that he he definitely took preseason as I'm going to make the AHL for sure. Like I'm going to be a pro, and he does. He looks like a pro. Um, he's just going to need some time to fill out and. His defending isn't awful, but he, he definitely will. There was one play last night where he just, there was a guy streaking past him and his defender or, or his defensive partner was trying to streak past to go get that guy. And instead of like backing into the play, he just kind of stopped skating and then just put a stick out waiting to try and intercept the puck. And the guy just like passed underneath him. And it was like, well, he should have stopped. Like he either should have attacked the guy or gone backwards because he just stopped skating and did nothing. Yeah. Yeah. It's just time. Like defenders need time. And he needs reps. And yeah, yeah, strength. it's not a big deal. I think I, I had it in, in my notes from yesterday's game because, like I said, I was watching him closely. Yeah. I think he he bounced off. Maybe it was Regenda, but that's 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 a little more okay. But there's other plays too where I thought that you, you wanted time. a little bit more uh, out, out of a guy that side. I said NHL level. It's fine for preseason. But he's so a good puck mover. Though, he, he yeah, really he is. is. Like oh, he is. He, he is. is a skilled puck mover and distributor. And. Um, He's young, still 19. Like, I think, honestly, I really thought he would go back to juniors just because I thought he would need more time. But I think he's showing he can at least play on a power play in the AHL. And that's what hopefully he will be doing this year. And uh, that's why he's my number, what is it, eight? Mm-hmm. I think I last year I had him at ten. Last time we did this, I think. Yeah, maybe. I think so. He was in your top ten, but. Yeah. Um, maybe 10. Oh, yeah, the play was actually, I'm just looking at my notes that it was. It was it was good one on one because it was basically Cagnoni versus versus Regenda on on a breakaway, and mm -hmm. you don't expect Cagnoni to erase Regenda because obviously Regenda's like six three and Regenda's like twenty two, but you want him to bother Regenda more, which sure. he didn't. Oh, that's he, right, I remember that. Yeah, and that's a play that I think is a good example of sort of that's a one on one, and that's how fast are you, how quick are you, how strong strong are you, and also your technique, too, your defending technique. Can yeah. you at least make make life a lot harder on 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 that man in a one on one? And I I I I, I think he could have done, or he will in the future do better on that. So, but he's not ready yet, though. Yeah, but I am I am um, encouraged that he's not throwing the puck away. That's what no I'm no he about. he has been good with the with the puck and on the power play. I don't think he's been like incredible, but he's made some nice. So he makes the plays you expect out of a decent power play quarterback, and also too he has made a, a couple of very nice plays. Spinorama in the neutral zone we saw yesterday. He had a nice slide on the power play blue line. Somebody was coming at him on a PK, and Cagnoni did just a nice simple sidestep, relaxed, yep. got the puck back down low. So stuff like that, and that's that that is. He looks good. He looks good with the with the puck uh, mm -hmm. on the man advantage. For and sure. he got an overtime winning goal last night. He did. He did. He did. He did. Yep. So, I'm happy um, that he's survived the first couple rounds of cuts so far, and excited to see him. Uh, I think it would have been, been very disappointing if he got cut really quickly because that would have been an a, a indicative that he needs a lot more work. But yeah. I think that he, he definitely has deserved to stick around at this point. The Sharks camp. 
I think the roster is down to 49 players right now. Some of them are hurt. Yep. So really like 44, True. 44 players. So that's, that's pretty good. Yep. We're down to 15 defensemen, but I think Vlasic counts in there too. So that's yeah, 14, so that's so, 13. So yeah. we're really in like two squads, right? Like Barracuda and yeah. NHL. Basically, basically. All right. Who is your number eight? Uh, let's see. My number eight is Haltonen, actually. Yes, Haltonen. And Haltonen, I think, you know, there's a balance here, right? Like a guy like, say, a Cardwell, right? I feel a lot better that, that Cardwell is going to be in the NHL and he's going to play games yep. and he's going to be reliable. Haltonen is very boom or bust. But the boom, obviously, is with with Halton in there there's, you can there's see a, the boom <laughs> there's a high ceiling right you can literally yeah. see the boom right and so that's why with all the misgivings i have about his game that i've expressed that we've talked about and that you just expressed that uh, i agreed with everything that, that you said but i still have him higher just because you see yeah. the size you see the shot and if other stuff can come together then you've got a player and other stuff doesn't need to be as good as the size or the shot it just needs to be average and you've got a player so it's far from it. So when I have him at number eight, it doesn't mean that 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 he is a he's not a better player than a Cagnoni right now. He's not a better player than a Cardwell right now. But can he be still? And does he have these you know these special these special qualities? It's there's there's something there. And so we so again he's a big we'll see guy. But I I have him at number eight for now. Yeah, and, and we'll see if he goes back to juniors. I would suspect he would. But, yeah. Um, who I knows? He, he did. He did come over from Finland, um, to sign with the Sharks and then play a junior year. I wonder. I don't know, but what if like there was some sort of wink, wink, nudge, nudge? We're gonna get you on the Barracuda. Well, play. well, put it this way then. I I don't think he'll be very good at the Barracuda this year. So if there was anything like that, which I don't think there is, but. I think he's a player that that needs to be in 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 London. Yeah. And he needs year. to round out his offensive game. He's not. He's be, not. I don't think he's close to even the Barracuda. So, yeah, there was also like people will remember that during the year in in London, he was like on the third line at points. Like he had a really good playoff, but he, he had was a really actually good playoff. Yeah. down the lineup in terms of even strength minutes. So there's still a chance for, or there's still an opportunity that he needs to take to be the first line. Every yeah. You situation. want him to do that at that level. You want him to be a first line. The coach mm-hmm. would never dream of, yeah, of, taking of, him off. of benching or scratching him or any of that kind of stuff. Yeah. So. Okay. So right. we are at your number seven, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Igor Chernyshev. Wow. Okay. You've got him high. Yeah. Yeah, I think based on, and this is, uh, again, like you said, a lot of it is um, scouting reports. And there are times when I've seen Chernyshev and I really, really like him. And I could see the vision of like a um, skilled power forward that can play in your top six if everything kind of goes right. And the the other guys that have, we've listed, I don't know if the the vision of a top six forward is really there. Even even maybe in Haltonen, if everything works out, but guys like Gustin, uh, Bistat, uh, Bordalo, you know Lund, Graf, all of these guys, I don't really see like the could make a top six. And I think Chernyshev has enough overall mm-hmm. that he could if everything goes okay. Okay. That being said, I haven't really loved him all that much when I've watched him. I think he's been okay when I've seen him. I think at some points I also was not super impressed with his feet. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think um, I, I like the fact that he came over. Like I'm, I'm super excited to see him in juniors because he could really be a dominant force in juniors after he recovers from his injury, obviously. Um, so that's going to be fun to watch. And I think this is kind of a pre bet that he's going to have a super good okay. year in juniors after he, uh, comes back from injury. Okay. But I do, I think there's a, there's a vision there that there's a reason why the Sharks went out and took him, you know, no questions asked first sure. day of the of day two or first pick sure. of day two. There's, there was a, this guy is a probable top or first round pick and uh, you're getting him at 33. So I like him a lot. It's just a. The times that I've seen him, I haven't been super high on him, but I know that there are the elements there and mm-hmm. that uh, people have been super high on him. So Right, right, right. It's a pre-bet, and also i got to watch him a ton in, in juniors. Okay. 
Uh, for my number seven, I have Beastead. Nice. And it is a reminder, once again, like I said, that you, you uh, Keegan and I, or we both agree that I think seven to 12, it's pretty interchangeable. Yeah, if we were to do like a tier list, I think seven to 12 is a tier. I think pretty like close. Yeah. Yeah. That's maybe two right. to. Two there to might six, be man. two tiers. I might put Beastead like a cut above a maybe Cagnoni or a, or a Gushin. But I, I get what you're saying, though. That's pretty close, though. Yeah. Yeah. There's a Macklin tier. There's a Macklin there's tier. Another tier, and then there's a sort of, uh, yeah, we're 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 getting into the next, uh, I guess maybe the third tier with our number six, maybe. But let me talk about Beastead before we get sure. there, though. That Beastead is a little higher for me because I obviously I like the package of, of tools that the size and the skating, and he has some playmaking ability, and. Also, too, the pos position he plays is sure. is, is very – he looks like a, a model kind of guy. Granted, he needs to fill out a lot, but he looks like a model kind of third-line center one day in a lot of ways. And you mentioned third or fourth-line center, but let's not forget that a 3C and a 4C is a big difference. A 3C is a guy that plays you 15, 16 minutes a night and can pop you in 30, 40 points uh, at yeah. best in Nick Bonino. A four C plays you ten minutes a night and slays at Nico Sturm. Both very good players, but Nick Nick Benino at his prime is more is valuable. A, yeah, right, way more valuable, right? And that's no disrespect to to Nico, but Beastead can't has that has that. I think a four C is sort of his floor that he he can he will be uh, at at worst like a average or crappy for c <laughs> yeah i mean you're right, right. like he, he can skate well enough and his tools are just too much he's gonna play some games he can be yeah right even even if it's just like some like 27 year old ahl call-up guy or something like that if he sticks around that long that sure. is but that's the tools are just are just too good that that he's gonna see some games but yeah uh, there needs a, a lot of refinement. So with with the beast, that there is obviously a lot of projection. But also, yeah. too, I think when we kind of come up with these lists, right, that we think about how we balance ceiling, but also certainty, too. Yeah, and so sure. there's probably a little more. Sir, I feel with the beast that even Halton and Halton, I may have too high because. I'm very, very not sure about Halton, and, but but beast that though. Beastead, I think there's some certainty there. Yeah. There's a little more. There's a little more. I think it, the gap for him to get there to be a good three C. Oh, that's part of it too, right? Like even if that's his ceiling and the ceiling is lower than the Haltonen, that that's a lot more reachable goal than to be a 25, 30 goal second line guy yeah. that can stay in the lineup on a good team, uh, which means that yeah, the five on five game is okay too. So that's Haltonen's challenge. So. Anyway, so 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 I, I think that the overall bundle of tools would be stead. I like I like the hockey sense. It's all very raw. It doesn't look on like a, and I watched them with the Barracuda a, a yeah. bit. Like there'll be twenty seconds or like uh, like there'll be a lot of a game where he does not kind of not doing a lot. It feels like, but then it kind of comes together in a sequence of plays. And you're like, oh, that's yeah, he's that's there. why that's why they picked him in the first round. So. A little bit more of that, obviously, and then the rough spots, obviously, you smooth over. So there's a little more A, B in his game in terms of the, the quality of performances, a little less C. And then you start to get something with, again, that size, that skating, and that legitimate playmaking and, and offensive and defensive sense. And he's a center, too, that you get a guy that you feel pretty good about, about – um, about sure. having having a decent NHL career. I do wonder, though, because I've always, and I think we both liked David Edstrom a little bit more than Beastead. So I wonder yeah. if, if Nashville sort of was given that, hey, <laughs> you want, you want a center, one. this one or this one, and they took they took Edstrom. So I, I wonder yeah. about that. I think Edstrom's picked a little bit more of a, he's picked the lane a little bit more. And, and I think right. he That's has a... Yeah, whereas B said it's still raw, and he's also a year behind and still raw. So that's like the right, right. Edstrom has a little more runway too. Yeah, I and but I still like B stat. I, I do appreciate that that basically he's like NHL coaches candy, right? He's like the he's the center that's you know not gonna hurt you probably. Off the bus, he looks like it for sure. Yeah, so 
there's still a definite role for for Beastad in the future. I just uh, and he's going to be basically not the Barracuda's one C, but Barracuda's top six center probably. I don't CC. know about that because let's see, you you have definitely Podorowski is is your one C. It could be Colin White. Is your t- I mean, Beastad might be competing with a Colin White and yeah. a Colin White as a veteran and a guy who's put up actually a good number of angel points. You figure that. Beastead may start off as a 3C, but of course, you just want to see that improvement and over a full season. And I know that Beastead did stall last year in Sweden, but I was actually pleasantly surprised by how he translated when he came yeah, over. For and sure. part of it could be they talk about that small ice difference and maybe that forced Beastead to play quicker. And he's got the size kind of to, to, to yeah. handle it. He's got the skating and quickness to handle it. So he might be a guy that just maybe needs to know how good he is and his game will grow a little bit too and he doesn't have as much time on his hands as he would on the bigger ice either try to do this or that he's kind of forced to to play quicker and that's not always a bad thing for a player to learn to be forced to play quicker yeah and he um he was always chosen as a a runway pick as a as a guy that's going to take many many years he was never a a guy that's going to be in the nhl in year two three right or whatever right, right it's always been a projection pick and he's still projecting it's not like he's trending down at all, really. I think it's just a hold steady. It's like an up and down yeah. year. I think we got a little too excited over the yeah. fan base or us as pundits yeah. after you I was won excited. SHL rookie. Right. As, he after looked really you won good. His world juniors year. were awesome. Right. Mm-hmm. It just like, yeah, the next year uh, or last season in SHL was a little bit of a plateau. Stagnation. But I think that he did sort of resuscitate his stock to some degree with a strong AHL showing yeah. in, in his, in his month or whatever, two weeks last year with the Barracuda. A little so, sweet yeah. PR, if you will, like CPR, <laughs> but it's sweet PR. I like that. Yeah. Sweet, sweet PR. It's really bad. We're an hour and a half. In, I know. Gotta... Yeah, I know. Yeah. That, yeah, the, yeah. It's really that, was, bad. that was, that was, that was still, that was still, that wasn't hilarious, but that, that was funny though. Okay. Thank good. God. Thank God. <laughs> All right, that was you. Your number seven. That was my number seven. So okay, okay. Uh, so we've gone through into the the mythical top six now, and yes. this is where it's going to get a little interesting because we'll see. But I would say three layers: celebrating layer, below mm-hmm. celebrating layer, and then we have another layer. So it's like that's a three my... layer, three layer dip. Yes, this is my my opinion of of of. But this is a clear top six, though. So. I both of us. I was really expecting this player to be higher, but when I did this list, I went, "Nope, this is where he's at," and it's Quentin Musty at number six for me. Um, well, should we? Because yeah, guess surprise. It's also Quentin Musty for me. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So no, we should okay, probably so let's re- talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we could just talk about these players together. I feel yes. like. Um, I. I really wanted some more from Quentin Musty. Like every, I, I've been watching him pretty closely, and it's just hasn't hasn't been there for me for him. Um, oh, seems let's, like let's let's be clear in in, training in preseason, camp. yeah, in, yeah. in preseason training camp. Um, yeah, he was amazing in rookie faceoff. He was dominant in rookie faceoff. Yeah, he looked awesome at, at points, and he had like a hat trick and was doing rookie face-off things checking, the problem is connecting plays uh, he's doing everything the problem is the game got a little bit quicker and i think musty got a not like slower but just isn't up to speed yet he kind of stops moving his feet to try and uh, get in position to connect plays and then the thing the game just passes him by or he gets the puck and then skates directly to pressure invites pressure but doesn't have the skill to get out of it or doesn't connect play to get it out and then he loses the puck and that's been happening this like whole preseason, it feels like. Um, he hasn't really shown the flashes of offense that he has in juniors because in juniors, he just kind of can play junior hockey and he gets the puck, he goes up the ice, he makes a fancy play, and he can make a pass. In this one, none of that happens. He can't get the puck, he can't make the fancy play, he can't make the pass. <laughs> right, right, right. And right. that's this is me shitting on Musty, and I apologize if you're listening. I think you're a great hockey player and you're an excellent junior hockey player. I think you just... I think he needs more time. He just needs and more I, time, which is I think okay. uh, I didn't expect it. I thought maybe he'd have a little bit better showing, especially after looking great in rookie faceoff. But I think it's, I think he's going to go back to juniors. You asked me ten days ago whether or not he gets the games, and I thought maybe he'd turn it around. And I don't think he gets the games. No, no, I'd be shocked at this point. I think we mm-hmm. ended up where 
you thought he would get the games. I, I was still in the, but I would say his rookie faceoff performance was so good that I thought I was starting to get in the well maybe. And yeah. let's see, let's see what he brings to training camp and the preseason. Yeah. And like I, I, I like you guys might have saw. I, I watched the scrimmages and I watched three players very closely, and yeah. he was one of them. And I wrote an article about what I saw and that what I've seen translated to the preseason games too. And yeah. I also mentioned I sent it to Keegan. So I was like, "Hey, I want I, oh, I, 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 I want to make sure that I'm not being unfair to the kid." But I I watched in the scrimmages. I watched. Um, I would say in general that I watched a player that dominated uh, dominated the OHL because he was bigger and faster than everybody get to a level where he wasn't bigger or faster than everybody else. And he had to, he has to kind of compensate. He has to play faster. He has to do a lot of different things and also feel a lot more. So then he can start to lean on people and then that will matter. And the potential is there with him. He is six. He is wonderfully skilled, but it just, he just will need time. And that, and that's really, really is, is okay. So I think that, I think that wasn't surprised by what I saw, but definitely his rookie faceoff performance was enough that it got me thinking. Mm-hmm. And a couple other scouts I talked to, they were just they they thought one scout thought that he was much better than Will Smith and the uh, who we'll get to in the rookie faceoff, and I agreed that he was definitely better than Will Smith. Another guy, another scout that I talked to is very, very cautious about rushing guys. And he was like, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Like, was definitely impressed by what he saw. Basically, if Musty, let's say I even talk about the the, the hat trick that he had in rookie face. But that's always easy. Okay, if you score a hat trick in the preseason, that's going to help you, right? That didn't help Gushin, but that's going to help you make it to the NHL. But in terms of the other stuff, connecting plays, being... Uh, being uh, uh, being dominant or at least being a, a four checking force, which Musty was in rookie faceoff, right? If he had done those exact, if he was able to translate that to the, the scrimmages and to preseason, then we still be talking about him. But those are the things that I'm I'm looking at more. Like when he has time and space, Musty still does some good things with the puck and makes some tough passes. He can still, I mean that that stuff he has. Like we know he has that. Like ton of skill as as long as he has time and space not worried about that part with him but the the b game the other stuff right like he was showing that at rookie faceoff and i hadn't seen that as much with him in previous sort of tournaments development camp so much i thought he was i think i mentioned he was a little bit of a one note player for me in mm-hmm. previous tournaments and he showed a different side in rookie faceoff and so he just has to get back to that really like he yeah. can do that in sudbury it doesn't matter how the team plays. He can still do that. He can maybe, I mean, it's one of these, I'm not sure how it's actually a good thing to interview him or interview a junior guy. But like, if the NHL team wants you to be a lot different than you're playing in junior, how do you negotiate that? And so I'm not sure how, how must you want to negotiate that exactly? Because from what I understand, Sudbury is a little bit more running gun, right? And yeah. I don't think that that's, that's not the best way for him to learn how to play the hockey he needs to play, I guess I would say, but he just needs to, he needs to kind of concentrate on those things and being a better all around player, I guess um, things that he was doing at rookie face. So again, I don't care that much about the goals because that's going to come for him. You know, he's going to be a guy that is, time and space he's going to score goals even if he plop him in the ahl or the nhl he, if he has a chance he can he can score he's he's very very t- he's like True. you know he's like a gushin right except he's six two and that's why he's so high he's 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 so tantalizing as a prospect because he, he has he has a small man skill but he has a power forward body yep. but just all that has to fill out and all that has to sort of fill uh, the body has to fill out and the rest of the game has to fill out the, the all around game. And so I'm not down on him. I mean, really like, I I think that I got a little up on him after rookie face off, like everyone else did. But in terms of you guys have, have probably heard me talk about Quentin Musty uh, a lot that, yeah, like it was, a, my praise has been a little more guarded with him. And so, um, yeah. So it doesn't mean though that he's not an excellent prospect and that 
Um, it just, just, just will take a little, maybe a little more time than Sharks fans want, but it doesn't, again, doesn't do him any service to be in the NHL, maybe even the AHL. It maybe, maybe junior is good for him, but it just has to play a different way. I will say that I did want to add. Though, he can't go to junior. So right. Oh, he can't go, go to there. AHL. That is. Yeah. yeah. I mean, but, sorry. He can't go to the yeah. minors. Yeah. Um, that one scout did. I, I want to say this in Quentin's favor was very, very high on him still, even mm-hmm. despite, you know, training camp or whatever. Right. And had him over Mukuma Doolin and who you guys know, I'm a big Mukuma Doolin fan. And if it all comes together, of course. Yeah. Like again, you have a six, two guy. If he, can score at a first line clip or close that that's a pretty special package a six two power forward he's gonna grow too so six foot two six foot three whatever he grows into power forward type with with small man skills popping in point per game 30 goals a season whatever right so ceiling is still there for him sky is still a little still a limit for for musty but yeah just a little more time it won't be this year i don't think i don't think so yeah <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah, he's one of the guys that that's why he's so high on this list is that there is the top six skill, the top six upside. Yep, it's definitely, just the, definitely, uh, definitely. Not not to be so far. And again, these are only preseason games, but it is a and they kept putting him out. They put him out on the second line yesterday. Um, he kept getting power play time too. I think he, he was he play. was pulled off the PP one. I think I think it was him that got pulled yes, off. Yes, it was. But, uh, but they still put him on on PP two. Um, and then I, you know, I, I want to go back to, to, to what I said about, uh, or go Gushin, right. That, yeah, you, sure. what are opportunity you're given out there? You just have to, you, you have to show out and he yeah. hasn't, but he's 19. And so I'm not, I'm not worried about it. And I want to give you credit too, that you're, uh, like we talked about, you have to have flexibility of mind with, with these prospects. You can't fall in love with them and be like, Hey, I said, this guy can play nine games. I'm sticking with it because yeah, no. he hasn't shown. He hasn't shown. I he honestly he hasn't yeah. shown anything close to that. No, um, that's even a debate at this point. Yeah, he, he really hasn't, which is kind of sad because he really after that face off, which is when we did that episode, it was like, man, flying high and like they were putting him in high up in the lineup because they were giving him opportunities, you know, like in the top, you know, six, nine, whatever. Right, right, right. He started off with like Wenberg, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So they were giving him opportunities players. with yeah. the NHL guys, not just like sitting down with the Barracuda guys. So you thought maybe, because sometimes they do that with junior guys. Like they know they're going to send it back to juniors. So they just play with the Barracuda or whoever. Right. But they gave Musty some high up minutes and the game's just a little too fast for him. He needs more time. He does look faster, like his feet a little bit. Um, but yeah, the game he got still leaner. Is, he did. He got leaner, got a little faster. But the game is still too, is going a little too fast. Yeah, he's he's trying to create fast. offense. You got to think fast. Yeah, he's got. A, he's still trying to create offense in the way that that Musty creates offense, and it's not working right now. So, right. But. The only thing I disagree with you is that I don't think it's sad at all. Like he's still a great prospect. Oh yeah, and he shouldn't be too down to. I know he wanted to break camp with the Sharks. He's also really young, right? Like how? Yeah, he's got to be nineteen. Maybe? He's nineteen. Yeah. So yeah. there's really nothing to be concerned about. And like I mentioned um, with with Costin, that. This applies to not just in game, but a training camp or a season that Mm -hmm. it can start out rough. Obviously, training camp has started out rough for him, but it's not to sound like like uh, like Bruce Wayne's dad from Batman Begins, but it's how you pick yourself up. And so that's he's also going to destroy juniors like he's going to kill it again, probably. I wouldn't even you wouldn't even put that on him. He needs to play a better two way game. I don't care what he scores in juniors. I want to be at least. Good. <laughs> I don't want him, to be like him, halfway in the game. Put him on the first can... line, but make yeah. him the make him make him the defensive stopper. True. Let the other guy score. Then then he's gonna come back a better player with the Sharks. But True. so I don't yeah. I don't I don't need him to break any records there. He needs yeah. to round out his game. He yeah that's he's not gonna I, he's not gonna score enough that he can just lean on that. He's not Connor McDavid or whatever, right? And he doesn't need to be that. He needs to round out this game, but the tools are all there. The size, the skating, all that stuff is there for him to round out his game. If he does it, then he's going to be just fine. You can you can take the musty out of uh, wait, what is it? Out of the out of juniors, but you can't get, take the juniors out of musty. I don't know. I still feel like he's going to go back and score like 150. <laughs> he probably points. will. Yeah, he probably will. He probably will. <laughs> um, but eventually, I think this is a this is a guy that 
has the uh, the upside, so he deserves yeah. to be this high. Yeah, he's he, he he's fine, and then um he's the our 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 consensus number five that he's right there with them, yeah. and a lot of people think that Musty is better than 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 this guy besides the scout I mentioned, but also yeah. I think Elite Prospects has has Musty way high and other kind of scouting or prospects lists. So. And he is very good. Our number five is one uh, big Shaq. Big Shakira yep. Mukamadulin, uh for both of us. Yes. Um, yeah, it's been that way for a bit, actually. Like, I remember wrestling with the Musty versus Mukamadulin thing, I don't know, a year ago. Mm-hmm. It's been, They seem to be in, like, the, that tier of the prospect pool where they're just going to be, like, head-to-head the whole time. Um, Good thing we didn't do the top ten list, like, the day after Rookie Face-Off or something like that. Eh. <laughs> I feel like I probably would have still had Musty, like, around this area. No, but I think you would have flipped Musty over Mukumadulin. Probably, <laughs> probably. Although we haven't seen Mukumadulin. What if Mukumadulin comes out and he looks terrible after this injury? Well, that's true, but we don't know. <laughs> but I, uh, I still, I'm, I'm believing in the the Mukumadulin plan. I think his mm-hmm. little cup of coffee in the NHL last year looked good. His AHL tape looked good. I think he's ready. It's just um, mm-hmm. the timing hasn't been there for him just yet. And once he gets into the lineup, gets into a spot where he's not like just going to be juggling around. I, I I really think he's going to stick. Just going to have to be there. Yeah. That's my I've said this pitch. Before a lot about Musty versus Mukumadulin that I feel like, I don't know, 70% sure or something that Mukumadulin is going to be a, a solid middle pairing guy, two way guy. And I feel that maybe Musty like 50% chance of being a second line scorer and maybe like a 10% chance that he's a first line guy and mm. something like that. Right. And I would take a second pairing defenseman over a second line scorer scoring winger, like almost every day of the week. And sure. so that's how, that's how I kind of see those two. And of course, Musty can has the ability to be better. Um, mm. you, Musty is still very young. Mukudulin is not. But anyway, though, so yeah, I, I'm kind of bummed uh, just in terms of I wanted to kind of see him come into camp and really establish himself, right? I uh, wanted because he did show a lot of flashes, a lot of promise last year in both the NHL and AHL. AHL All-Star last year, too. But well, so we'll just sort of have to wait and see with him. But yeah, I feel I feel pretty good with him. And um, I once he gets in, that I think it'll be hard to get him out of the lineup for sure. Our number four, consensus number four, <laughs> is one uh, Sam Jose Dickinson. Yep. <laughs> um, I will say, I mean, he's an 18-year-old defenseman playing sure. in, in a league that's way above his head right now. I have, <laughs> I don't think he's been very good. I think he's been okay, mm-hmm. but I, I don't think he's been very good in these preseason games that he's played. I would say, I wouldn't say not very good. He hasn't been, cons- he hasn't been consistent. I think that... He mixes plays where he looks like angel defenseman. Like I, I noted one play where he just came out of the corner with the with the puck, uh, uh, kind of uh, carrying the puck out, like like ready to lead the rush, ready to break it out to somebody. He looked like angel defenseman because he skates so well. Yes, he's he so big, and so he thought, "Well, wow, you know who 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 is that? <laughs> you know, is that a six four Eric Carlson or something like that, right?" But like obviously though, he mixes that with some some rushes like one-on-ones with the puck that get turned over quickly and then he's in the wrong position so he gets he's on the wrong side of the puck with some of the risk that he takes but these are all stuff that will get ironed out and what he does show consistently i mean just raw tools size yep. skating a skill um mm-hmm. he might be the sharks best prospect in terms of just raw raw tools like because a guy like Smith is a more kind of cerebral guy. Like, obviously, he's not a physical force like a Dickinson is. So he might be the number two best prospect right behind Celebrini. Maybe a Scarop. Because Scarop is a kind of a physical, yeah, physical kind of beast, freak yeah. himself, too. So Dickinson really just a bundle of tools and just got drafted. Yeah. So I don't worry that he's kind of a mess out there because <laughs> yeah. he's 18. Um, and he's so, yeah. And, yeah. and I agree. They're... And I put out a tweet that I think people like are taken the wrong way. I put out a tweet that was basically like, I know that we are hoping that like Dickinson's offense eventually translates into the NHL mm-hmm. level. But honestly, I think like his defense is eventually going to be the thing that wins him a, a job and hopefully a top pairing role eventually. Like he, um, 
His defensive skating is pretty good. His stick is good. He he can read the play defensively really well. He breaks up two on ones. Yeah, well. he's going to be he a strong panic. player. He's he, strong. He's physical. He's willing to use his body. I think yeah. yes. You you hope a lot of the offense comes around, and most of these guys it does. Like they get to a level where they can make a good breakout pass and and then fill in on the power play, and they they put up 30, 40 points a year. And I think that's where I kind of see Dickinson as a guy. He's like a a solid 30, 40 point defenseman plays a two-way game solid defensively that you put in 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 all situations. It plays like 22 minutes a night, and that's what the Sharks need. Um, But I don't think he's going to be Eric Carlson. I don't think think people who are drafted him to be like Adam Fox and, you know, Mira Heiskin and Carlson. I don't think that's going to be a Sam Dickinson, ultimately. Right, and that's that's perfectly okay, but like... He's a guy like every physical trait that you want in a defenseman. Yeah, like, he has pretty much got it. like. Yeah, he really he probably does. Probably has that more than like we mentioned than even the guys who were picked higher than him yeah. or a Bouillon who's dropped right behind him. He's all those guys like ah, oh, they're a little bit small and they're a little bit this or that, yeah. right? And Dickinson's kind of got everything, so mm-hmm. it's just a matter of, of putting together in one package and better decision making, yeah. uh, consistent hockey sense, reliability, all those kind of things. And right? I want to stress but, me saying yeah. that he hasn't been good. It's like. I, I recognize again that he's 18 and, and and I don't want to say that I'm just like down on him. I'm not. I still think he's going to be a great defenseman one day. It's just hasn't been good I enough think, for the NHL. Yeah, he's not good right. enough for this level right now. Right, and he both. makes a lot of he makes a lot of bad passes currently that has a lot to of get mistakes up. for sure, for sure, so, for sure. I will time is is time. He's on his side yeah. for sure. I will add that one scout that I talked to really likes Dickinson and actually had Dickinson at number two, and that's what I think we're going to find uh, that it's not as clear cut for Will Smith at number two talking to some people, but Ooh. so anyway, so this, 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 uh, this scout really liked Dickinson, liked it, watched him at rookie face off and liked him a lot, despite all the mistakes he made at rookie face off. He's again, a guy that age defenseman, you're just looking at the ceiling. You're not looking so much at the reliability at this point, because yeah. that, you know, that you'll iron out over time. Yeah. And, and that's, People will get mad at me about my, that that tweet. I'm just trying to say that he's not going to be Adam Fox. That's it. But he's he's very likely going to be like a Noah Hannafin or something like that. And it's like those are oh, super valuable yeah. dudes. Yeah, so. that'll be that'll be a wonderful sort of yeah <clears throat> result for him. Yeah, exactly. That's the kind of defenseman that I think he fits into the mold of. All right, don't don't stop DMing me. My DMs they're full. <laughs> not not really nobody dms me <laughs> i get like one from liz a year and that's about it <laughs> um okay who's next our third ranked prospect that is unanimous again our top yes. six is unanimous is the is the the thing that we're trying to tell you guys <laughs> other took, people it's not, it's not unanimous for other people but yes for but, us, and also it ended we up this, being unanimous yeah we do this blind where we, we didn't this tell each other yes yeah, yeah so we just kind of plop our list down and go oh shit it's the top six is the same so yeah all right number three is yaroslav askarov which we've also not seen in preseason like mugamadulin sadly um we have shiny new toy syndrome and we can't see him mm. um but um, I think that based off of everything and pedigree and athleticism and um, everything that I think this is where he slots um, for me. I'm very hopeful that one day he's going to be a, um, a starting goaltender for the Sharks. I think that's well, a, a realistic outcome. Goaltender. Yeah. 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 Well, one Scott I talked to had Askarov number two, which I think you can see that's a very – reasonable you can argue that even dickinson you can argue too just because again the bundle of tools if you think that the hockey sense will 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 corral all that stuff that i could see dickinson being that high same thing with askarov and so yeah not much uh, much to say because we just we haven't seen him um Mm -hmm. he's got he's got an electric personality though and so it's been fun to the one time we talked with him and also to shout out the story that nikita sokolov did for for san jose hockey now you know that nikita writes the best stories about these guys gets to speak with these guys in russian and gets on the inside of these guys like he did last year with barabanov and muka Badul and great stories about those guys and romanov so anyway so he did a great story with with yaroslav and so you should read it 
funny, hilarious guy. So guy that you do, you do, you do cheer for. And so going back to some of the maturity questions I had, I mean, I think it's wasn't is not so much about that celebration. I'd say for myself, the 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 bench press, but I think it's more like yeah, like like uh like clotheslining a guy in a playoff game, that's <laughs> kind of stuff, right? And yeah. so that might still need some work. We have no idea because we haven't seen him yet, but. <laughs> A lot of obviously a lot of pure talent, a lot of ability, and could be a number one guy. And just like the our next two guys could be number one centers too. And so I think that's partly why too they're so high because yeah. the ceiling. Yeah, yeah. Like uh like Musty, can he be a number one winger? Maybe, but at the our percentage chances aren't we don't feel so strong about that. Mukumadul and Dickinson, can he be a number one defenseman? Eh. Maybe probably not. Dickinson, obviously, there's more of a runway because he's a lot younger, sure. so so it could happen. But anyway, though, As- uh, Askarov, yeah. Uh, the expectation is that he does he does do that. He is uh, not just a number one goalie, but a top number one goalie. And so, yeah, hopefully he can get out there and and, and start practicing soon. Love it. Yeah, I have nothing to add on Askarov. Mm-hmm. I, uh, I think he's a good slot at number three. Yeah. Great ad by Mike Greer. Great uh recognition of where we're weak at and then and then trying to pick up a like we're picking up the best prospect that we could for that that spot so right right it's kind of too if you look at sort of the what the sharks traded off so you traded edstrom off who is sure we had over beastead but in the same kind of class he's in that, right? he's in that seven to twelve right class. so yeah. so no disrespect to philip but maybe we traded a slightly better or a slightly more uh, at the moment highly regarded Philip Beestead off in Edstrom, and in the pick, which we don't know, there's a little bit of a chance with that. So that could be, that could be a, t- a, a 11 pick, or that can be a, a 30th pick, right? And you trade that for uh, Askarov, who is your number three prospect. I think I feel pretty good about that. Yeah, you're consolidating, and mm-hmm. the the part that you're weakest in. All right, exactly. All right, number two is one William Smithian uh, for both of us. Mm-hmm. Um, he looked okay, I think, in his in the preseason debut. Yeah. I would say not not a uh, amazing. <laughs> yeah, okay, maybe a little less than that for me. Our expectations I, were like this because of Celebrini, or my expectations, and then it was just like meh. My um, I I I the 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 thing I did uh, about the scrimmages, um, and this was before the preseason games. Sure, I I feel are still what I kind of I what I've seen so far in the preseason and preseason games from all all three of them, where I think with Smith, I like him in offensive zone. I think he's gonna be good on the power play. Yep. I think that even though we haven't seen it yet, I think that he's a better part. He's going to be better on a power play than Cagnoni. I know a lot of people are very high on Cagnoni on a power play based on what we've seen so far, but I think Smith, when Smith gets a few more games and settles in, Smith is going to be a good part of the power play. He can do that right now. Everywhere else though is a big concern for me right now. And so I think that with Smith, you're going to have a lot of highs and lows this season. So you're going to have some plays where he's, He's he's uncorking some wonderful, unbelievable passes, yep. and someone's gonna finish them. It's gonna be high real, and then there's gonna be some plays where he just he gets he gets dummied off a puck, and then someone's gonna break away and score, or or he's gonna try something in a neutral zone that he shouldn't have, and mm-hmm. that's gonna lead to a goal. Um, it, he might see some AHL time. He might need it. He might he might get benched here and there too. So I think it, that's that's my guess. I don't think he's gonna be. I know we use the Taves and Kane comparison a lot, and Smith his talents kind of align more with the Patrick Kane in terms of just being the more offensively, offensively um, mm-hmm. a Wade guy as opposed to a Taves. But I don't think he's gonna have that kind of impact his first year, yeah. like 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 Kane did winning the Calder. That's there's nothing wrong with that. I think long term. I've said this before actually. That I, I see Smith as maybe being more of a Clayton Keller in the end, which mm. sounds like, oh, that's not enough. But that's a Clayton Keller's a wonderful player. So that is enough, especially if you have Celebrini as your number one guy. So that's a good mix. Yeah, it's a good mix of player there. And maybe he'll be better than that. Uh Will Smith, that is. So anyway, I it's to me, I think expectations were maybe a little high just because celebrating and smith are tied in so much together but they're different yeah. players and really celebrating is just exceptional he really is in his own tier uh, yes. of class and it's not just because of the skill obviously because 
in terms of pure skill, Will Smith is actually, I think, right there with with the Celebrini. And he's also a very smart player, too, like a Celebrini. But it's just that Celebrini plays faster and also, too, Celebrini is stronger. And so that's a, two big elements that separate a Celebrini from a Smith right now. But Smith is still just 19, and and he's going to catch up. He's going to have a couple of years here uh, yeah. where he's, he's going to catch up. And I think he will. I think he's a very smart player. And so I'm not... I'm not. I'm not worried about if he, if he doesn't win a Calder. He's not even in the top five or whatever this year. I'm not concerned about that. I think he's going to be just fine. But he's just a guy that temper your expectations a little bit, give him a little, a little bit of time, and I think he should reward it. Yeah, I think one time you asked me if if Halton in the shot was the single best attribute of any Sharks prospect, and I think uh, my answer was Will Smith's vision was probably the number mm. one, and I think that's still the case. Like unless you count like Celebrini's generationalness, <laughs> I don't know his his ability to play hockey. His hockey Celebrini, sense, maybe. Celebrininess. <laughs> Celebrininess. I don't know, but but Will Smith's vision is really that's his that's his key. Like he's he's a very good passer. He's a very yeah. skilled playmaker that in his, his frame and his size and everything and the way that he plays it's going to take a little bit but he's going to play in the nhl most of the year probably the entire year maybe the ahl for a touch we'll see um but i um it's gonna take a while and yeah. he's gonna get um not beat up, but he's going to get, obviously, it's going to get physical in a, a different way that he's used to from college. But he did have some moments in the game, and he had such good passes that you kind of overlook it at some points. You're like, damn, nobody else can make that play, I think. <laughs> yeah. And you really hope that he, he just so shines I, like, in the said, power Some play. of the scrimmage clips that, that, I, that, that I, I collected, that yep. he was making great pass after great pass. Some of them I even notice because mm-hmm. I just was filming whenever he was in offensive zone, just to kind of... Just to, just to have it there, and then I watched back. And I was like, "Oh wow, he he made that pass." There's one pass he made a good drill in the scrimmage clips that I didn't see at first, and yep. I was like, "That was that was a amazing pass that Goudreau couldn't quite finish it." But that was yeah, it was a backhand pass from the corner that just kind of trickled through the defender to Goudreau, and Goudreau was 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 was, uh, was attacking the front of the net. Just watch that. Go go to that story. Just watch that clip, and that's that's what Will Smith can do for you. Hmm. And he was doing that consistently in the scrimmages. I think the scrimmages, less physicality, that the speed, the pace he was playing with was fine at scrimmages. But yeah, it wasn't fine, I think, in the first preseason game. But I think, again, very smart player. So I think he'll adjust quickly. And I think that's yeah. the, like I said, the difference with, with him and a Musty in terms of just the, not that Musty isn't a smart player, but Musty is a more physical player. It depends on that. Smith yep. doesn't depend on that as much so i think that i think that with smith you just you want to see him is he going to get better from here much better by from here in the end of the season at Mm -hmm. this high high level and the sharks are betting that he will i I saw people in my ear scout told me that he thinks that will should have gone back to college for another year and there's an argument for that too i will say though that when you say that people disregard that if will wants to come out he's a college guy that you don't you really don't want that cutter situation you don't want that rucker mcgrowdy situation if a guy really really wants to come out and it's close enough then you just, do it just sign him yeah. <laughs> don't 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 leave him another year and just and he he yeah, the very so. beginning of his college year last year he wasn't even struggle it just he wasn't like the will smith at the end of the year at all right. and it took a it took a bit and he adjusted and and <laughs> to the physicality and the speed. And I think it's the same thing by the end of the year. I think it will be a significantly improved Will Smith. It's just going to take a while. People who are down on, on will, I think don't credit his hockey brain enough. He is smart. I think that's, that's what it is. But you see a guy like I watched, we watched the same game at the same preseason game, right? He Mm -hmm. looked on his feet and skating. He looked a little slow at times. He obviously is smaller. He's not the strongest player. So it, looks like at times that here's a guy that's going to be crushed Mm -hmm. right at the angel level because just the physical package is not is not is it doesn't look quite enough but then he'll uncork some pass that pretty much only he and maybe celebrini could have could have seen or something like that right like very few players could have seen on the sharks an accolade maybe maybe a granlin but at best these kind of guys right and so people i think uh i think I think, like I said, he's not a guy off the bus that looks like, okay, this guy is going gonna, is, is gonna to plop in, uh, be a mm-hmm. point-per-game angel player one day. But 
I think that that is underrating his hockey intelligence, which, yes, I'm very, very high on. His vision, right, is connected to that, like you mentioned. And so I think he's going to be just fine. I do feel strongly uh, with him as my number two. Agreed. I do think, though, that this year, though, that he's probably going to be better served on wing, on my opinion, um, at least if the Sharks stay healthy. Because I look at the Sharks right now, and I wrote about this during that, that, during that Vegas game, that right now you've got, and we'll talk about Celebrini in a second, but Granlin or Celebrini uh, are going to be your, your, your top two centers, right? They should be, at least right now from what I'm seeing. Wenberg is a great 3C. He's a playoff caliber 3C. Sturm is a Stanley Cup winning 4C. These, these, these four guys are better centermen than Will Smith right now. Mm -hmm. And so I can see that it'd be, it could be good for Smith to be kind of protected on, on, on the wing there. Or what they're going to do is they're going to have Smith play center, but they'll have somebody like they've had good and they've had Granlin on his wing Grandland, but yeah. during the big face-offs and a lot of defensive, a lot of the center defensive responsibility, they will, they will ask a good or a Granlin or a Wedenberg or whoever ends up to, to take, take care of that or to, to kind of lead that for, for Will Smith, Will Smith, because that's going to be rough for, for Will. Yeah, I wonder if they, like you're saying, they either put him as center, but yeah, Granlin and or Wenberg around him, um, or Gaudreau or whoever, right? Yeah, I or mean, Gaudreau. I mean, even but... Delandria can play. I mean, that's the thing that the Sharks did very smartly that they they signed a lot of guys who can play center capably. This would be a great place for uh, Logan Couture. It's just too bad that that he can't be around for it because that's one thing I would say that it's, this is another non sequitur or a digression, but we didn't ask this of Logan, but it must be like killing him that like the Sharks are on the upswing and he knows know. the excitement. He can't be a part of it and be yeah. a, a helpful part of it because he would – Logan Couture Help. from two years ago would be a huge part of it. Like he would be – Okay, you got Celebrini anchoring uh, a line as sort of a defense. Like he doesn't need as much defensive help. You put Logan on Will Smith's wing. Perfect. Yep. Sad. But yeah, I'm not worried about Smith. I think uh, he's got. He's gonna have a a uh, up and down year. But just look for the highlights and then just make sure you're. Or just look for the improvements and and yeah, see that too. Yep. He's a smart player and he's never. He's always been competitive, so. It's not like he, um, the brain's still there. So yeah, he, yeah, that's another thing too. He, there's a high compete level. There's a yeah. high want to be For to sure. be great. I think with him, um, that's what I understand from people. And so he's not a guy that I think is going to coast. And yeah. if he was, then yes, that would be a problem because then a smaller, slight, offensively skilled, doesn't care guy, it doesn't last long in NHL. But sure. I think he does care. I also think that being with a guy like Celebrini who just oozes you know combat. it's gonna put they're gonna push each other they're gonna yeah. push each other and so i think that i i think i yeah, again yeah i'm not i'm not worried about it i don't care what he does with the preseason mm -hmm. i don't care if he's kind of bullied a bit the first couple months of the season because i think will smith yeah i think he will be i think it'll be that adjustment there at the nhl he, he's gonna look not quite ready at times maybe even a lot of times True. early on but i think he'll be fine and i think i'm okay with i know some people are like he should have been to college but Besides the fact that he has so much leverage and you want to just get a guy out to sign, besides that part of it, I think that the Sharks wouldn't have let it happen if they didn't think that he could no. get better and because of how smart I also, he is. I want him to the be Sharks challenged in yeah. a different way. I don't want him to be right. playing with Gabe Pro and Ryan Leonard. I, right, I want right, him to right. be playing with NHLers and trying to, to figure it out with them rather than just doing the same shit and, and running the same plays at BC over and over and over again. I think if the Sharks thought he would be killed, they would insist he stayed. Yeah. That doesn't matter the power he has or whatever, because mm -hmm. they don't. They wouldn't want to ruin his career because, yeah, yeah, they they don't they don't they don't they don't want to throw a guy who's completely out of out of his depth in the NHL. And I think there will be times this year, like I said, that Will is going to look completely out of his depth. But look at the like you said, look at the improvements over the years and over the year, and look at the highlights. And I think yeah. that I expect that both will be there. I I do think the Sharks made the right decision overall to have him out. I disagree with the scout who said that. And other people have said that to, said that to, said that to us too. But yeah. I think that I think that he's going to be fine in the big picture. Macklin Celebrini is our number one prospect. Who would have guessed? <laughs> um, yeah, the, the, the kid just came out in his first preseason game as a nearly, nearly 17-year-old, now 18, 
uh, and just killed it. Like, it, we, they lost, so that sucks. But, like, it really felt like the Matt and Celebrini show. And um, he, he, you know, pocketed one of his patented one-timers from the slot, the, uh, from, like, right outside the circle that he loves. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, great vision on his past that he, he just has a lot of utility, I think, in a, as a number one C in the future. Like, I think he's going to play in all situations, and it was Sidney Crosby light, and, I, and I'm and really excited about it in his preseason yeah. game. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those things, too, where, and I always stress this, that I don't really watch the goals. The sure. I do watch, but that's not how I judge a player because, look, Gushin scored a hat trick in the preseason. Like, a lot of guys do stuff. Ivan Chekovic scored a hat trick in the preseason. A lot of guys do <laughs> good stuff in the preseason, but sure. consistently that night you watch like he is getting underneath people defensively. He yes. is he he he's on a rush. He enters the zone. He makes a uh he does his pass, not a great pass, doesn't connect, but instead of kind of making a move toward the puck to chase it, no, he 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 turns back play and and he's thinking defense already. Those are the kind of things that 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 I think. Uh, those are the things that that make make me certain of his angel readiness. And like yep. I mentioned, or maybe I told you this before. Actually, I didn't. I don't think I said this. Uh, said this on the podcast. I don't know if I wrote in a scrimmage too, but maybe I did uh, in my what I wrote about the scrimmage. But so the two things that define Macklin, what I watched him so far, is the angel body. I mean, his strength is yes. is okay. He's not, he's going to get stronger, right? Mm -hmm. Like as he is right now, he's not going to win a Selkie trophy. He's not strong enough for that, but he's strong enough to survive. And then if he just extrapolate that, okay, if he's this as an 18 year old, as long as he doesn't plateau at 23, he might be able to win a Selkie trophy or something like, that, or very young age, even 21. I don't know. Right. So that part you feel good about the other part though, more importantly to me in terms of why I think he can slip step in. And I've been kind of, uh, very, I I tend to be very very cautious with prospects, yeah. and I take in what I hear from people. So if someone tells me that Chris Peters told us this is going to be the most important moment in Sharks history, even beyond the Joe George, Joe Thornton trade, well, Chris Peters, I respect and I put it out there, but I don't know. I haven't watched Macklin enough. Uh, when a scout will tell me that, hey, this guy is this guy is 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 a guy, you know, this guy can Sidney Crosby, Jonathan Taze comparisons, right? When Jay Pandolfo says stuff like that too, right? I put that out there, but I don't know because I haven't seen him enough in college. And also too, like I always say that my ability to judge like what a guy does in a college game and what how that will translate to NHL, I'm not sure about that yet. Because you watch like say a Colin Graf, right? In yeah. college, right? This guy is uh, this guy is a Hobie Baker. Like I think he was in the top three or maybe he wasn't, but still he's basically like Will Smith, right? But how is that going to translate? And I'm not sure yet when I watch a college game. I see these guys do these great things. I don't know. So it wasn't until I saw Macklin at the rookie face-off. I was like, oh, wow, this guy is way better than everybody at rookie face-off. And For sure. I watched him in the first AHL. Oh, granted, the level he was playing was a very, very low level of the Golden Knights sort of preseason roster. Like, um, it wasn't until yesterday, the Ducks game, the third, the Sharks third game, where they got – kind of a legitimate angel roster which it makes what gushin did a little more impressive yesterday so it was a very low level roster but macklin looked like the sharks top center in that in the, in that game and it wasn't again it wasn't just the goal it wasn't the assist it was the little things he was doing it was a defensive attention he's not a perfect player but ultimately though what makes me confident about his translation is just how fast he plays and yes. how he knows what he wants to do pretty much the second he gets the puck and he's also pretty good with the puck, too. He's not great. Uh, he's not like Wayne Gretzky where every pass is hitting. But the ideas are there. And if there's a mistake, the pass doesn't connect. He's always he's already retreating on defense. And when they do connect, like it did with the Tyler Toffoli goal, then it's a highlight reel. Or even on a play that didn't quite connect, but Bruce Cassidy cited that spinorama and then a hard backhand pass to Mikhail Granlin in the second mm -hmm. period, that – those are the kind of plays that, and he's like, say he's quick about it. He's faster than his competition. And I think that'll translate. Obviously when he gets to the NHL, it'll be even faster. So he won't have his way. I don't think he's got a hundred points, but when I watch him more though, I feel pretty good about saying that he is my Calder trophy favorite. It's not because 
he's a shark or again you guys know me it's it's not it's not a favoritism isn't thing i'm very careful about ever voting for sharks in yeah. in, in voting just for that reason because i don't want to get too like oh that's the only team i watch they must be the greatest players in the world because they they aren't as we've seen in the standings the last few years but yeah every i guess i guess i'm trying to say that every time i i've, I've watched him that that celebrity has been better than i expected in a way and so it wouldn't surprise me if he pops in 60 points this year. And we're going to talk about this. When is he going to be the Sharks number one center? But I don't, I don't I've been talking about, I always say no notes with Celebrini. I talk about him for 20 minutes. So no notes, before we get to our all debate, the notes. all but the all notes. The yeah. Notes. But I agree. Yeah, he, yeah. he, um, like you mentioned, it, it, it feels like you, you took an NHL or that's 25. That's been playing in the league for like five years. And then, also inserted just plus level skills shooting on top of it. It's like he he already is an NHL player. Plus he has like super dynamic skills, and I, and it's weird to see that in a prospect because you see that in, in some generational prospect. It's weird to see that in a Sharks prospect. I guess is the way to put it. <laughs> I've been watching and following Sharks prospect for many many years, and it's very rare that somebody comes in this ready. And never, never. You tell never. me. <laughs> yeah, tell me when the first time. Never. Was. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I mean, Marlo, I guess, came in pretty ready, but like not this ready. Nah, I, mean, I don't <laughs> think this ready. No, yeah. I mean, Marlo scored what 14 goals, 18 assists, right? Yeah, and Joe yeah. Thornton came in at like 20 points in his rookie year or something, right? Or not, not even, even. No, he had like, had, like seven six, points. I yeah, had seven points in his rookie year. So it's very rare. And I honestly, I don't, I think Macklin's gonna come in and just do super well, not even from the points perspective, just. Just like you said, like he gets back defensively, he recognizes his mistakes and immediately is going the other way for coverage. I don't know, and he, he recognizes the defender or his teammates' mistakes too. I was uh, I can't remember the play exactly, but it was a play where somebody turned the puck over, and before the player turned the puck over, he knew they were going to turn the puck over, <laughs> and was like already I can kind believe of it. yeah. He's very conscious yeah. of it. Yeah, he really is. He's reading the ice at all times, and I was like, <laughs> that's celebrating going back because he knew that he's going to turn the puck <laughs> over, and he did. And it was like it was like in the developing play, like the play was getting turned over, and celebrating yeah. was like, all right, I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> it was really funny. Um, but yeah, it's just like little things like that. If you watch Celebrini without the buck, you're like, he really understands that's, the flow. That's where you see the difference, right? Between him yep. and really any prospect the Sharks have had, even Will Smith or William Ack, like great Anybody. prospects, right? But you, that's a big, big difference where you the don't even need to watch game. him with the puck or an offensive zone. You see him yeah. outside of it. Yep, exactly. And um, super excited. When is he going to be the one C? Maybe day one. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe they might. I think they'll just be cautious it. with it. I think okay. that. I think that they're gonna. They're gonna give it. Well, you know, it's a good question, right? If Granlin starts on a wing, then maybe it is celebrating from day one, mm -hmm. right? But maybe. I think that that Granlin was so good last year that. I don't know. I I think that I'm gonna predict that. Granlin has also got a little injury, right? Right now. Right, right, right. He does. Yeah, but we don't know how serious it is. But I think that. I could be wrong. I think that it's the best for the Sharks, at least for if they want to win games that get off to a better start this season, that, that Granlin is at center and Smith is at wing. This is my opinion. And so that would make Granlin probably your 1C to start the season and Celebrini as your 2C. And then I think Celebrini will probably be the 1C I conservatively the by the All-Star break, maybe even. Yeah. Like he, he, yeah, I mean, I see him getting better throughout the season too, right? Like right now there's an argument uh, that like, without him playing one NHL game that he could he could be the Sharks one. I think there is that argument, but I'm going to give it to to Granlin, who's, yeah, who's uh, the incumbent, who's, who's done a great job of, or did a great job of it last year. But I can see him kind of usurping him by, uh, by, yeah, pretty quickly in the season. Yeah, and it could also just be a, a case of where they, one game it's Granlin and one C right. and Telebrini two or two C and then they they rotate the next game and then they both get power play time and yeah because I think Celebrini gets on power play one right away right right I, I think they're gonna put him on there I think that's gonna be interesting that's something we'll talk about more more as there's more roster cuts and we have a better sense of what the roster will be with injuries and whatnot but I think the Sharks first power play unit it's gonna be very interesting in terms of who's gonna be on there because. There are a lot of guys who were part of a very good power play to end last year that are 
maybe going to get frozen out or not a lot of guys, but a couple of guys like maybe yeah. it's Ederlin, right? Yeah, maybe, maybe even Eklund. a Granlin. Uh, you feel pretty good about Ek- uh, Eklund staying there because I think they want to give him, he's a young guy too. Maybe Granlin as a glue guy, but yeah, maybe a Zetterlin. Um, we'll see. I think that's going to be really interesting because then he has Smith and Celebrini who, are, who have a claim on it. So I think that's going to be a very interesting discussion or whatever. Yeah. Uh, and do we, they do five have... forwards again? I wonder. Maybe that'll happen. That's interesting too. Yeah. Grandlin up at the point and that kind of thing. Maybe. Celebrini doesn't play the hasn't doesn't really do that, but I, there's no reason why Celebrini couldn't play it though. Mm-hmm. I think right. So. Yeah. Uh, I'm excited. Uh, that was that, honestly they lost that game, but I didn't even care. <laughs> like they shouldn't have lost that game, but I, I do yeah, whatever because Vegas was playing a shitty lineup. Like, well, I, I, I want to remind people though. I think people forget though that even though Vegas wasn't playing like a as a ta- as talented a lineup as the Sharks were, that yeah, that was filled of pro players, pro Asia players that like and heavy and maybe too. may have played together too uh, with Henderson. And so yeah. the Sharks had a lot of 18 year old. I don't think, I don't think Vegas was throwing out guys like a, a Sam Dickinson, a Will Smith, a Quentin mm-hmm. Musty, just guys that are very, very raw. Right. They're they're They were throwing out more pros or they older threw out the, the like only, a Brendan Brisson. Uh, the only other Keegan in the NHL and Keegan Colasar. Right. Who is a, 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 He's a pro. NHLer, right. Yeah. yeah. Legit NHLers. So, <laughs> so actually in some ways it's one of those things where like, it's one of those things like on paper, you think, Oh, Sharks are going to win because he got so much talent, but, um, uh, older, uh, more together team, heavy team too, heavy team, better mm-hmm. coach. Not to, not to say uh, in terms of, of Cassidy versus Warsawski, but better coach in terms of their experience. Mm-hmm. together right in vegas systems be it with henderson or vegas it wasn't that surprising to me same thing with the anaheim game where again you have a you have kind of a veteran ahl group that um with more more uh with with uh just older that just they kind of know no pro hockey a, a bit more and you have a raw group like the sharks making maybe a, a bunch of mistakes out there eh, mm-hmm. it's not that surprising so um okay that's our top 10. That is our top 10. Yeah, we got we through did it. it. Yeah. <laughs> we did it. Um, I, I We've going on for a while. It's two and a half hours now. We did. Oh, we I'm... never actually did the... Oh, uh, we thought, let's not even do it. <laughs> oh, the, oh, look uh... at a bunch of forwards here that, that we didn't talk about. It's really fine. Don't worry about yeah, it. Yeah, we'll do it. We'll do it next, uh, next week. We have more cuts anyway. Yeah, yeah. Um, we had some minor cuts today, but I imagine we're going to get the junior cut soon. Guys yeah. like maybe Dickinson, Halton, and, and uh, uh, Musty and stuff like that. We'll see. I would say a quick prediction now, just looking at this, mm. though, that if there are no major injuries up front, that I think that Gushin starts in the Bar- Barracuda, and then he's sort of like the first call up. This is just a prediction. So I think Gushin will need an injury to kind of break into this lineup. I'm just looking at this right now. So Yeah. And I think that's only because they might keep up Giovanni Smith. Well, and there's also things too in terms of um, waivers, right? Like cost, like Gushin has been better than Costin, but one is waiver exempt, one is not. Sure. Whatever happened to Radim Shimek? Did he uh, go to? Did he go back to check? I think he went back to check. Yeah, yeah. Let me see. Because like then, I mean, essentially we got Rick Clem Costin for free, right? Because we gave yes. him Radim. Yes, Shemek yeah. That was, was a... that was always a con. That was always sort of a contract. Uh, Mm-hmm. Uh, I think probably just a swap of angel contracts and also a contract thing in terms of um, taking on uh, Costin's contract. Yeah. So like it, was a, it was a Detroit cap dump. Yeah, basically. Anyway, and yes, was... he is. He is in Czechia. <laughs> okay. So yes, there, I do wonder, um, but there is some, there's ups and downs with Costin. So I don't think they're going to just be like, yep, waved, go to the Kuda. Like, I think they're going to keep him. Um, rather I think than... there's enough ups and we've seen it. We just saw yeah. it in yesterday's game that, yeah, it's hard to just wave a guy. You maybe want to, you maybe want, and you're, you're a team that you're not gunning to make the playoffs. So you can give a guy a little bit of a chance and give him a few games. And then if he, sure. if 10, 20 games, you still have the up and down cost, and then you wave or trade him and it's fine. Yeah. We'll see. Hopefully Gucci makes it, but I, 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 I would rather he play the Barracuda consistently than get like two games and get sent down when he has like, you know, a turnover or two. Because I, I, he needs time. Like, he needs a runway, right? Like, we they gave Bordalo like, 20 games last year. He needs, like, a consistent 20-game 
time. And I don't know. We how could to spend get there. a good half hour, hour talking about and Gushin. Uh, Gushin uh, should have had Mike Hoffman spot probably at the yes, last, second last half year. of last year. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> but anyway, that's neither here nor there. So. Oh, whatever. It's all better days ahead. Better exactly. days ahead. So. Macklin Celebrini hype train. Yeah. Um, exactly. All right, y'all. I, 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 I am on. I am on that hype train. Okay. So, Shang's on the hype train. I, 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 I'm sold. He's so becoming far. a Sharks fan. He's he not can no longer be like that's not, not a Sharks fan, but I <laughs> again I, I like how, how Mac plays. I've mentioned it before. I just I really admire guys that play that kind of way. Bergeron, yep. Kopitar, Taves, that kind of style. And he's 18 doing it. Yep. Took Kopitar, I think, a little while to learn it. I Selbrini is kind of he's not at as good as those guys, but he has the right mentality though. Right on my right on my uh on my jersey buy list is an Eklund Cali Finn jersey because I okay. think that looks sick, and then a Celebrini teal jersey. I think okay. that's that's on my list because I don't know the Celebrini and teal looks really good. Yeah, I like it. I like. The I think white I like. Myself. I think I like Smith and white and Celebrini. Oh really? And teal. Yeah. Oh, okay. But hey, that seems like that's another fifteen minute conversation that we you should. know <laughs> we got we don't we don't got time for this. We got important topics. Um, next week we will have. It'll be getting close, right? Like probably the next time we record, it'll be the fourth, maybe. It'll be yeah. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Opening. Yeah, night. it'll be pretty close. Yeah, it'll be pretty close. Yeah. So, we'll see you all then. Um, hope you all have a good week. Bye.